case number 3075, Drake versus Wayne's Corner. All parties, please step forward. Derek Drake is suing his former girlfriend, Rose Vito Wayne's Kerner, for an unpaid car loan. Mr. Drake. Yes, ma'am. Is your claim that the defendant owes you $1,000 for the down payment that you gave her for a car? Yes, Your Honor. The defendant says she owes you nothing. It was your idea because you wanted better access to her. Ms. Kerner says that you owe her the same $1,000 because you destroyed or threw away some dresses that she had purchased for your sister's and gave you the dresses to hold until you saw your sisters and you disposed of them. She wants the value or what she paid for them. Mr. Drake, I found some of the papers interesting. How do you know Ms. Kerner? Well, we used to live in the same apartment complex. About six months ago, she moved into a, she moved out of the, the complex. When she lived in the complex, did you have a relationship with her? No, we were just friends. Okay, who did you live with, sir? I lived by myself. And who did Miss Kerner live with? She lived by herself. And then she moved away? Yes. And you continued to see her? Yes. Tell me about that. Well, we, we became good friends, and uh, when she moved away, we just carried on our friendship. She would come by and see me, I would go by and see her. It wasn't a romantic relationship? No. Not romantic? No. Not intimate, just no, friends? just friends. Okay, tell me about the car loan. Well, she came by my uh, apartment one day, and she was, uh, uh, she had an electric bike, and the bike, she said it's, it was no good anymore. I said, well, would you like some more transportation? And she said, yes. I said, I can loan you $1,000 to buy you a vehicle if you pay me back. And she says, okay, I could, I could take that loan. And I said, can you pay me back within six months uh, because I was going to drunk driving school? I said, I'm going to graduate from drunk driving school in six months, so I need the money because I need to buy me a car. You said, I can loan you $1,000. Did you go with Miss Kerner to find a car? Yes, Your Honor. How did you get there? Uh, one of her friends drove us. It was at a tow yard. It wasn't in the city of San Jose. It was right outside the city. And did you have check or cash? I had cash. And you acknowledged that he put down $1,000 for the car? Put down? Well, it, uh, I didn't say loan, Miss okay. Kerner. I said you acknowledged that he put he, down yeah, $1,000 for yeah, the car. He was there. Yes. How much? No, not he was there. <laughs> he he yeah. put down $1,000 yeah. for the yeah. car. He, yeah. Okay. And you paid a total of $1,700 for the car? It probably t totaled up after the paying the, um, for the registration and stuff, okay? How because much? it was $1,250. Okay. And then he said that he was going to pay for the, you know, pay for the car and stuff, you know, for the gas, because I didn't want a car. You know, I was content with my bike, you know, and, but he <sighs> insists, so... That's where the seven comes in, because he wants to pay, me to pay back for the registration, the car. How much did you pay? Nothing. So he paid the whole thing? Yeah. He wanted it, yeah. He only says he loaned you $1,000. No, no. Well, if that's what he's saying, that's what he's saying, okay? But it came up to, it came up to 1250 and then the 17 it totals out, I guess, out for 17 I don't know how, but it totals out for the um, registration. So that's probably where it comes for 1700 how much did you put down on the car? Uh, a thousand dollars. Well, where'd you get the other money from? Uh, I don't know. Well, you say in your complaint that she purchased the car, she found the car for seventeen hundred dollars. So I'm asking you, if you gave her a thousand, did she come up with seven hundred? I guess so. Oh my God, I'm getting very, very confused. All right, now, Miss Kerner, Mr. Drake says that you were friends. Mm -hmm. You describe him in your answer. As a Sancho. A Sancho. Sancho, what is that? That's your, um, I guess uh, people call it friends with benefits nowadays. Friends with benefits. Mm -hmm. So are you suggesting that he had benefits? Oh, yeah. And is that why you used to bike ride to his house? Yeah. Shh. Clearly it was forgettable <laughs> for him. <laughs> Do you still have the car? Oh, yes, ma'am. What do you use it for? For, uh... I like to go to the grocery store. I don't drive very much. So uh, go to the grocery store or go and see my kids or take the dogs to the park. You know, I don't work. So. Now, you have a sister? You have some uh, sisters? I have, I have four sisters, Your Honor. Did you invite Miss Kerner to travel at some point to your sisters for a party? Uh, well, we went down to Atlanta, Georgia in April, on April 28th, because my sister was retired, or her retirement party. 
And we was also going to go to Flint, Michigan on July 21st for my sister's birthday. Okay. Did there come a time when Miss Kerner delivered some dresses to you for your sisters? Yes, yeah, she delivered some dresses to me while we, so we can take to Flint, Michigan on July 31st. But I was upset with her because she never even made me one payment. So I put them in the hallway and I guess somebody took them. I, I did not throw them away or destroy them. Well, you got rid of them if you put them in the hallway, sir. Derek Drake claims his former girlfriend, Rosvita Wayne's Kerner, owes for an unpaid car loan. Rosvita is countersuing Derek for the cost of designer dresses. Where did you get the dresses from? I, I got them from, um, from my mom. They were willed to me, willed to me, because she had passed. So they were used dresses? No, they weren't used dresses. Because well, my you mom didn't a, buy them? N- no, but they weren't used. She, my mom was a, a shopaholic, and so she left me these wonderful dresses, but they were for taller women. His sisters were tall. I'm not going to send no junky, trashy dresses to, you know, impress his family with, you know. And so they're all name brand, nice dresses, really pretty. Ask him, he's seen them all. You know, they were nothing. beautiful. I'm not going to send nothing tacky. And so I asked him for the dresses back when he copped his attitude. And he told me he put them out in the hall. He copped an attitude about what? About the car. What about the car? Okay, let me tell you what happened, okay? There's, I have a, this fatal attraction person that's like all up in my grill. I don't want nothing to do with him. So he got a hold of his phone number, called him, Told him I was driving all these men around town, and he copped the attitude about me driving, and which I was not because I don't like to drive. Why am I going to? I'm 61 years old. Why am I going to drive some dudes around town for? You know, they're going to drive me around town and take me to go eat. So he copped the attitude, and then I found out I'm getting paper in the mail about I'm being sued. And then that, and then I asked him four days later. I says, because I waited, you know, maybe he's going to call or something. He didn't. And then I asked him about the dresses. And that's when he told me he put them out. I says, why you put those dresses out? Why didn't you just call me? And he, he just, I, I don't have to call you, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, so I just turned around and walked away. Tell me about the car. Okay. He told me his version about the car. Okay. So the car, he kept on telling me, you know, Rose, let me buy you a car. Let me get you a car. I'm going to get you a car. I'm going to get you a car. No, I'm cool. I don't want the car. I'm happy with my, my bike. Because I don't drive. Okay. After you bought the car, did you drive in the car to go to any vacations with his family? Um, no, because his family's not here. But we did drive to the airport. That's what the main thing was, just to get to the, go to the airport, get us there. And then when we get, out, get, get back, the car was there so we can drive back home. Where did you go from we, what to the airport? When you went to the airport, where did you travel to? To the airport. And then where did you go? Once oh, to you- Atlanta. From where? From San Jose. Who purchased the tickets? He did. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. How come you bought tickets to take her anywhere? She was just because she was a friend? Because she was a very good friend. How much is a very good friend? Well, I I wanted her to meet my sisters down in Atlanta, Georgia, because she was retiring. And and I just wanted her to meet them. Why? Why? Yeah, she was just a friend. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, she was a close friend. How close? Very close. And I would I just wanted her to meet my family. Okay. She was very a very close friend. Yes, ma- yes, Your Honor. Got it. Okay. You see, he's more chivalrous than you are. Oh. Okay. He's more chivalrous than you are. <laughs> Anything else either one of you want to tell me? Did you get angry, by the way? You saw something that was written somewhere that she was driving with men in the car. Who told you that. I guess some friend, one of her friends called me up and told me all this. But Don't I, tell me I, you guess. I, I got upset because she, she wasn't paying back the loan. Nah, I don't think so. How much were the tickets from California they, to They were $1,600. That's very expensive. Yes, it, was. Yes, it is. $1,600 for both? Yes. And when you got there, where did you stay? We stayed at my sister's house in Atlanta. The next trip that you were supposed to take, did you have to fly there for the retirement uh, party? Yes, we was, we was going to go to Flint, Michigan on July 21st for my sister's birthday. How were you going to get there? Uh, we was going to fly. And you were going to buy the tickets? Yes. Sounds like a very good friend. Very good, yes. But we never, we never took that trip. I understand. Did you drive anywhere else with Miss Kerner in the car? 
No. Did she take you to work? No. Did she take you any place else? Did you go out for dinner? No. She just drove back and forth to your house? Yes, yes, Your Honor. And when she drove back and forth to your house, did she ever stay over? No. She came at what time or what time did she leave when she would come to visit? She would come at around one o'clock in the morning. She would leave about two or three. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Drake, I know that you were probably annoyed that you heard from her friend that she was using this car that you purchased for her and she was taking other people around in the car. So I know that that was, that that was probably an annoyance for you, but that doesn't create a loan. I don't believe it was a loan, Mr. Drake. I think she's more accurate and I've never, you learn something new every day. Sancho. Sancho. Sancho, Sancho. yeah. Okay, which I believe is probably accurate. And you have no value on these dresses. There um, is no- yes, I, 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 well, I pulled them up online, okay? And um, what they look like, yeah. you know, and- um, And you gave them away. You gave them to him. Well, yeah, to his, to, well, to his, you know, to give to his sisters, okay. not you're, to throw away. You're not getting any money from him. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'm okay. good with it. You got a car out of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, have but a good day. It's just the point, Judge, that's all. Have a good day. Thank you. It's court you too. Sir. I know I didn't win and she didn't win, but but life goes on. You know, life, life is good. It's, it's just another day. Well, it's all good with me. I mean, hell, I got a free car out of it. How she was driving other guys around in the car that I bought, that I paid for. Hell no. But she, I found out later on that they were just making that up. Because he had he had said, when I went to go see him, he had said, you know, oh, you driving all kinds of men in the car? I asked her and she said no. And uh, I found out that she was telling the truth. I'm all like, dude. When am I going to be driving dudes around in my car? I guess you could say that, that I, I am her Sancho. No Sancho for me, no more. I'm good. You know, when you asked him what time his friend came to visit him once she upgraded from the electric bike to the car, I had my pencil ready. I was ready to write, you know, after work or maybe before if she was going to take him. You know, the normal hours, one to two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you learn something new every, every day. day. <laughs> I certainly did. I learned what a Sancho was. Okay, yeah. He wanted to fight me. Leave her alone. Okay, so, um... Not, this is not a so. This is a... Um, he is currently incarcerated, Your Honor. Where? In a state correctional institution in Florida. When did he go into jail? He was arrested in September of 2022. Has he been incarcerated since? Yes, ma'am. You have three children with him? Yes, Your Honor. How old are you? I'm 20 years old. 20? Yes, ma'am. How old are your children? I actually have four in total. Um, I have a five-year-old who turns six in December. Um, I have a three-year-old who turns four in August, a two-year-old who turns three in August, and a newborn, two weeks old, ma'am. Who do you live with? I live by myself. The only connection that you have with the plaintiff is that you have one child with her husband, yes, who is how old? He's about to be five in the end of July. Now, this is your complaint. Many of these things at least start in 2022. And it is your claim that Miss Bigelow, who has one child with your husband, embarked on a course of conduct that can clearly be described as harassment, defamation, which you're going to present to me, and the allegations were serious enough, and this is back in 2022, I would assume, that you filed an application for a protective order. Um, it was in 2021 that I had filed the protective order. What month? It was, I believe, March. Did you have a trial on that protective order? There was no trial. There was enough evidence present. No, no, no. There was no trial? No, ma'am. Were you present when the protective order was granted? Yes, ma'am. And you consented to it? Yes. Okay, so you consented to the plaintiff having a protective order indicating that for 12 months, mm -hmm. and hopefully for the rest of your life, you would not assault, menace, threaten, or harass her. Yes, ma'am. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And according to what I've read, that was in effect until March of 2022. Yes, ma'am. While the protective order was in effect, there was a violation of that protective order. Correct, Your Honor. What month? Um, it was in the month of March, March 15th. 
of 2022 or 2021? 2021, Your Honor. Was there a hearing on the violation of the protective order? Yes, there was. And I believe at that time, probation temporarily was given to Ms. Bigelow. Is that correct, Ms. Bigelow? Yes, ma'am, administrative probation. And all of the events that are the subject of your petition happened between 2021 and 2022. This has actually been going on far longer than that, and the... Have any of the acts that Ms. Bigelow were prevented from doing as a result of the protective order occurred after the protective order expired in March of 2022? Yes, ma'am, I can provide evidence. That's what I want to see. So now we have Ms. Bigelow, who is on notice. She consented to a protective order because she knew that the evidence would be clear that you were entitled to it. Otherwise, nobody consents to it. So she consented to that order, which means you either assaulted, menaced, threatened, or harassed her. I assume it was a cause of harassment. Then you violated that order and you got a period of probation. Okay. Now I'm hearing evidence of acts that occurred after the protective order. I'm just hearing it. After the protective order expired in March of 2022. Yes. Correct? You want to tell me when the first incident was? The first incident was when um, we had me and my husband um, on TikTok. There's an algorithm that shows random videos, and she popped up on his For You page, and it was a post about her mother. And so she was living with her mother at the time, and he sent it to her mother. Your husband did? Yes. I only want to know things that had to do with you. Okay. Um, so I was arrested after my husband got arrested. They tried to charge Just me. a second. You were arrested in what month? It was in October, ma'am. Of what year? 2022. You were arrested for what? They tried to claim that I was trafficking drugs. That's what your husband is in jail for? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What did that have to do with her? It doesn't. Um, well, she... then it doesn't. Well, it doesn't. She, she had made posts about me going to jail. Can I see them? Yes, ma'am. This doesn't say anything that is defamatory. I want to know what you meant is she's already lost custody of her children enough times. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping one day I might be able to gain custody of my son's two daughters. What is that? Okay, so um, Haley Chapman claimed that she had no understanding of the drugs being in the home when she was no, no, no. found guilty. What is my son's two daughters? Do you mean your boyfriend's? No, 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 her children. She's religiously lost custody of her children. No, 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 what I'm... Years. I understand that. I don't understand this sentence. You wrote, she has already lost custody of her children enough times. I am hoping one day I might be able to gain custody of my son's two daughters. Oh, sorry, not daughters, but sisters. I apologize. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your Honor, just, I actually... Just a second. So far, it's not defamatory. I have it, my order for reunification. I've only lost my children one time. Doesn't matter. Put a look at it. So far, I don't see anything defamatory. If she wrote that you were arrested and you were arrested, that's not defamatory. Lee Chapman claims her husband's ex-girlfriend, Felon Bigelow, owes for defamation, harassment, and emotional distress. Felon is countersuing Haley for emotional distress. He's still breaking, buddy. There's something wrong with you. You understand that? Yes. Yeah, I understand that this is all coming from a very stupid place, a very stupid brain that you have absolutely nothing to do with except that you were mad at this guy, at this prize that's in sitting in jail for drugs. And so, yeah, don't tell me that you were trying to be altruistic. I don't believe it. No, that's not it. Um, actually, her husband assaulted me. I was a child and he was an adult for a year and a half of my childhood. My, my son is a product of rape. You don't get me. That has nothing to do with her. She has shown up at my house. Just a second. Medication. That has... Okay. Okay, so she sent a picture of your mugshot, which is also not illegal. 
and said that you were arrested and charged with trafficking in fentanyl, which you were, right? Which you were. Those charges were subsequently dismissed? No, ma'am. Um, I was granted pretrial diversion because they didn't have the evidence that they needed to actually... I, that's not what I asked you. You were arrested. Yes, ma'am. This is your milk shot. Mm -hmm. And you were arrested for drugs. Correct. So she didn't print anything that wasn't true. You were arrested, you were arrested. For... I'm not saying that what she did was right. I'm saying what she did was stupid, pointless, and just out of nothing but jealousy. Nothing. She certainly doesn't care about your children. Okay. So far, what you've showed me, nasty, but not actionable because it's true. What's next? I have the TikTok that she posted of her claim that she was sexually assaulted by my husband, which backfired on me as well. Um, I had to Just shut a down. That's what she says. That has nothing to do with you. Well, an onslaught of people came and harassed me because of her post. I don't know that at all. And if they harassed you, that's their problem. But I'll take a look at what you want me to look at. But if she accused your husband of a crime of raping her, and she said, it's your bad judgment to be with him. And now I assume you have four children with him? Uh, three, Your Honor. Three, and one with somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, wonderful. Sounds terrific. 20 years old. Sounds like we're going in the right direction here for a joyous life. Oh. What do you do for a living? I'm a bartender. How many children do you have? One. Who do you live with? Uh, myself, but I'm currently moving. Moving where? South Carolina. With whom? Uh, my son and I. Why? To leave Florida. Why? Why South Carolina? You um, just put I want to go to so I want to go to college for underwater welding, and they don't offer that program where I live currently. Who are you going with? Just by myself. Who just lives my... in South Carolina? Nobody. Do you have a place to live? Yes. Who's paying for it? Me. From what? My my job. I've been saving over the last two years. How much money do you have in the bank? I have 180,000. Oh. Okay. All nasty, stupid, it's not actionable. What else? Um, I have here that she told me to hurt myself and that she was going to expose nude photos of me. I'd like to see that. Um, I also have here um, her saying that she wanted to throw bed bugs in my yard and on me. This is all stupid stuff, but nasty and stupid and vicious. And I must add, illiterate. So I hope you're going to a very good school wherever you're going. First, they should teach you literacy. Um, What's next? I did suffer um, chronic post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, what? and depression because of this whole situation. No, you're, you suffer from anxiety, depression, if you do, because you were 15 years old when you had a baby, and then you had four more children, you're 20 years old, and your husband's in jail. <laughs> that, that would put any normal person in a situation of depression. I do have proof, Your Honor. You don't have proof. It's from my psychiatrist. If your psychiatrist was here and you wish to waive it, I'll be more than happy to listen to your psychiatrist. It's what you told your psychiatrist. I'm telling you, I don't have to be a psychiatrist. Somebody who's 20 years old and has four children all under the age of five and whose husband is incarcerated for the last year and a half and has one child in between that that's not his, that's a reason to be depressed. There's a reason to be depressed. Her nagging you because she's a stupid and jealous is nasty, but not anywhere as nasty as your husband getting arrested, going to jail, leaving his three children and his wife alone to fend for themselves. And if he was incarcerated for drugs, making them, dealing with them, and you were living together, it's kind of hard for me to imagine that you wouldn't have some suspicion of what he was doing for a living. Do you understand what I mean? That would I cause understand. me situational depression. And there is only one way to deal with your situational depression, which is to get your life in order. Currently, I am a nursing student, and I have a year left. Is it a building that you go to? Yes, ma'am. I restart in September of this year.
you start or you started last year? I started and then I took a break and then I go back in September. When did you take a break? Um, from August of last year up until September, this upcoming September. And now you're going back in September? Yes. And what have you been doing in between, in aside between, having a baby? In between then, I've just been working. Um, I have two jobs. Where are your children? My children are actually um, with my friend at the hotel. All f four of them? Two of them, Your Honor. Where are the rest of them? One is staying with my mother-in-law, and my son is in summer camp. Which one is with your mother-in-law? One of my daughters that I have with my husband. And how old is the child who's in summer camp? He's five. Is he in sleepaway summer camp? No. Well, who does he live with? Um, he lives with me. Who's taking care of him now? Right now, his grandpa. His grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Is that your father? It is my son's dad's father. Oh, God. Haley Chapman has accused her husband's ex-girlfriend, Fallon Bigelow, of defamation and harassment. Fallon claims Haley falsely called child services, causing her emotional distress. All right, you have anything else you want to show me? So far, there's a bunch of nonsense. It's not yes, nonsense, it's just very unfortunate. This is um, her saying that she wanted to fight me. Um, I don't care about wanting to fight you. You didn't fight with her, right? No. And she didn't come to fight you, and she didn't hit you. No. Right? All right, we're done. Let's see, money owed for emotional distress caused by leaking photos. All right. Uh, Haley Chapman uh, posted child pornography of me um, via Facebook. When? September of 2018. Um, also, her and her husband were under investigation for extortion of child pornography, threatening that if I did not fight them, they would release the video of him sexually assaulting me while I was pregnant. I would like to see where she, not he, where she sent you something that you consider harassment. Okay, um, she has shown up to my house on- No, no, she, mm -hmm. listen to me carefully, she sent you an extortion letter. I wanna see where she did, not her husband. The police took the iPod with the original conversation because it involved child that, If I don't have it, I don't have it. Okay, that's understandable. Do you have it? The answer is yes or no. No, not the original okay. conversation. Miss Chapman, I told you my best long and short term advice to you. You are articulate, nice looking, a young, whole life ahead of you. It depends upon where you want to hang your hopes. And if you hang it with somebody who's incarcerated, that's ridiculous, he's not coming out to you anywhere. You have a new father for your baby. Do you live with that person? Do you live with no, that person? Who do you live with? I live alone. I also have the times that she made fictitious DCF calls against me and messages of her admitting that she called DCF on me because I wouldn't fight her. Because you wouldn't fight her? Yes. I would like to actually take a look at those. Not that you're gonna get a penny from her. You understand that? Yep. You understand why? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. And by the way, you know, I understand that you say that there was an abusive sexual relationship between you and her husband, yes. who is the father of your child. Yes, ma'am. You did, in fact, allow him to see the child regularly. Is no, that No? No. He, you mean he's never seen his never. son? Um, actually, no, uh, incorrect. Um, when my son was first born, he was six hours late. He came in, he said hello. And other than that, he was not permitted to be around the child. So he never came to your house and never saw him from the time the child was born until the time he went into jail. Is that correct? Uh, the only time that he did see my son was when she came to my house in June of 2022, when he was parked outside the house and my son had come outside. Other than that, he has not been around my child. Yeah, well, you're Haley on this, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. She's angry at you, mm -hmm. right? She's angry at you because you won't stop. You keep posting, posting stuff about her, about her husband, about the kids, whatever. It's all because... There were multiple either... reasons as to why I was upset with her. Um, there were on three different occasions when the restraining order was put in place claiming that I violated when I did not. I was only... Just found... a second. Okay. There was a final order of protection mm -hmm. and a finding that you violated that final order of protection. And all this stuff was harassing, nasty... Unfortunately, not defamatory, but clearly annoying. 
and she finally said, I've had enough. You have no case. You have no case, and you're just lucky I'm not awarding her any money because nothing that you posted about her was not true. She was, in fact, arrested. I assume that you were, in fact, a minor when you became pregnant, and the father of your child was an adult. I assume all those things are true. Listen to me. If you saved $180,000, which is a lot of money, mm -hmm. to be able to save mm -hmm. over a couple of years bartending, which is to your credit, and if what you're going to do is try to start a new life, good for you. Yes, ma'am. Good for you. Put your time to better use. Leave her alone. She's got enough troubles just negotiating life at age 20 with four children. Leave her alone. Okay, so... Um... Not, this is not a so. This is a period. The end. Goodbye. This court is adjourned. I believe that she gave me some really good life advice and um, was able to hopefully open the defendant's eyes as to the problems that she's been causing. She threatened me, threatened my friends, made fictitious DCF reports against me. Things just mellow out and she decides not to. Time to get out of Florida. Defame me or harass me anymore. That case reminded me of my family court days, Sarah. Here's this guy who was an adult. She was 15 when her first child was born, 14 when she got pregnant. And I don't understand why that guy's not in jail. For something other for than that. drugs. For something other than drugs. Except she probably... He married her not, and then had well, three more children. Married, I'm not sure when he married her, but in between there, in the beginning, he had a child with the defendant. Mm -hmm. And I think that the plaintiff and defendant sort of knew each other. But there are now five children all with mothers, single mothers, who are unsettled, and there's no question. One's living with a grandparent, one's staying here, one back with a friend in a hotel room. It's just so sad for these children. I don't know how to convince generations of young people that you're not supposed to have children that you're not emotionally and financially and equipped to take care of. Just do that. And it makes every and step of her getting her life back on track at 20 as a child herself, all the more difficult with four kids in tow. So oh. not only, you know, how sad it is for the children, but she's a child herself that should be able to get her life back on track. It would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. She, you know, both, they both seem to be articulate people. Of course, they can't write, but maybe it's <laughs> just the way they write when they write text. Twitter like fingers, a, you know. Yeah, Twitter, but it looks illiterate to me. Maybe <laughs> I'm just from the wrong generation. That's possible. But it's just sad for those five kids. 3042, Moore versus James. All parties, please step forward. Dorothy Moore is suing her former friend, Jasmine James, for totaling her ATV dirt bike during a ride for peace. Ms. Moore, it is basically your claim that the defendant owes you for a new ATV because she crashed one that she had borrowed from you. Um, that is correct. What I gather is you have a group of mostly of women, all women, who ride motorcycles or ATVs together. And the nexus that keeps the group together are women who somehow have lost loved ones or friends to gun violence. That is correct, too. When did you start this group? I started this group October 21st of 2021. Why? Because um, I moved to Cincinnati from Pensacola, Florida. I was married 11 months before I lost my husband due to gun violence. And I had no family in Cincinnati, so I started the group. I searched for ladies in Cincinnati who had been through the same thing, and I wanted to form a sisterhood with those ladies. I had 64 young ladies to come before me, and out that 64, 10 of them or true sisters. And tell me what you did with this group of 10 women. Well, I, I entered them in a lot of events in Cincinnati. What um, kind of events? Women empowerment um, parades, um, parades for kids to inspire them as well. They would like us to come and speak. We were in the Cincinnati Reds parade. I mean, anywhere we went, a lot, we encouraged a lot of women and young ladies. When did Miss James join your group? She joined my group um, October 15th of 2021. As background, Ms. James, can you tell me why you joined the group? So me and all the ladies bonded on having lost family members 
to gun violence. Did you have such a loss? <sighs> yeah. It was, a, it was a loss for the family, so it was something new to me. And when you joined the plaintiff for these rides and parades, were you using your own vehicle? Yes, ma'am, and some of them, but mine was damaged. So Miss Dorothy, she, she allowed me to borrow hers. Was that the ATV that we're talking about here today? Yes, ma'am. So on what date did you borrow the ATV? Um, August 16th. That was our um, ride for peace. How many women were involved? Maybe six or seven of us. And you were riding through various communities? Did you have a sign? Did you have something identifying what you were doing? We had bandanas and um, we wore all the same colors. Do you have any photographs for I me to look at? Several photos I would like of to the see group. Them. I have the very first, um, second photo is a picture of me actually in jazz together and pictures of the group. I don't see anything here that talks about gun violence in these pictures, by the way. D-G-R-Y-D-E-R-S, what does that mean? Dirty Girl Riders. Dirty Girl Riders. Yeah, this doesn't say anything to me about gun violence. If I saw this group of women riding around in black leather in very exposed costumes without any identifying T-shirts, Mothers Against Gun Violence, something, I would think that it was just a bunch of bikers in leather. This looks like it, it's some sort of a heavy metal rock concert. <laughs> Were you drinking? Or claims her former friend, Jasmine James, drove her ATV dirt bike while drinking and crashed it into a pole. Now, August 16th, you were riding her son's new ATV. Tell me what you observed, Miss Moore. On that day, on August the 16th, we were riding down Reading Road. If I could come up and Absolutely. We were riding down Reading Road. We were coming southbound. So we were right here in this lane. And we was riding in a signal fine line coming down this way. And we were crossing over to go here. And Miss James was like the, I think, the fourth or Fifth person I was in front, I led the pack. Miss James, she was the third person and she was coming. There's a turning lane right here to go on to Paddock. Miss James wasn't in the turning lane. She was in the lane where we were. That's not she true. did a Shh. she did an illegal turn and went this way and lost control of the bike and bang and hit the pole. On that day, I observed Miss James not acting like herself. She was um, driving on the side of me. Um, jumping in front of me. One thing in the bike world, you don't jump on the side of a three-wheeler. They ride signified line. Only two pair can ride together is two two-wheelers. We later found out Miss James had been drinking, so that explains why she was not acting like herself. We didn't find that out till after the accident. That's how would you? How did you find that out, Miss Moore? When Miss James hit the pole, she hit the impact so hard that everything she had on her shattered. So it was like six or seven liquor bottles fell out her shirt. Her shoe went one way and other stuff that she had. What kind of liquor bottles? Like small liquor bottles, like, you know, the party liquor bottles, you can buy them like for a dollar in the store. Mm -hmm. They came out of her shirt. And um, Did you see that? Yes, when she fell, she landed back and she paused for a moment. We all thought she was dead. We all started hollering and crying because we thought she, we had lost her. She didn't say anything. You know, we just, we thought she was dead. And so we all ran up to her. And when we ran up to her, her whole leg was split open. And we were study seeing jazz, jazz. And she was still like this. That's when my other sister walked up to me and she said, look, look. And we're looking at the liquor bottles all over the place. And so she quickly gathered them before we called the police. Did you have insurance on the bike that you were riding? I had full coverage on my bike and I had liability coverage on the bike that Jazz was riding. Why only liability coverage? Because that's all that they offered me on that bike. Oh, because your, your son was riding it? Yeah, it was. How old is your son? 19 years old. Okay, so they gave you liability but not collision? Correct. Okay, your version of the events is somewhat different from hers. And I gather from what the 
plaintiff is saying, and from your answer, that you were seriously injured that day and was hospitalized. I was, I was. Okay. Now I'd like you, you can go up to the board and tell me your version of how this unfortunate accident occurred. We were coming down Reading Road. Me and Miss Dorothy were in the turning lane. Miss Dorothy actually jumped in front of me. That's, that's not true. And Shh. took a right without a turning signal. And it, it, it startled me and I lost control and crashed. But we were here. I was in the right lane and Dorothy was in the left lane. Okay, it's clear that this ATV was destroyed. And when had you purchased it? I purchased the ATV on April 21st, 2022. How much? $2,279. Okay, now, when you were hospitalized, and since you tell me that this accident was caused by her negligence. Did you contact a lawyer? No, I did not. Why not? That was my sister, so I, I didn't expect to be sued. Were you drinking that day? No, ma'am. What were the little liquor bottles that she was talking about? I had possession of them, but I hadn't been drinking that day. What were you doing with them on the ride? They were in my purse. What for? I planned to later on but I would have been in trouble if I had been drinking, if liquor bottles was on the scene and they flew all over the place. Well, you would have been in trouble unless someone picked them up before the police arrived, which is what they did. Okay. That's not true. All right, anything else? I have a text message where Ms. James um, texted me and stated that she was going to pay me back. And I'd like to see it. And also, when they put her in the ambulance, she said, Prez, don't worry about it. I'm gonna pay you back for your bike. I'm gonna pay you back for your bike before they rolled off with her. It's the Can top I see them, Judge? Just a second. Top paragraph. Well, you talk about paying her back for her bike, which you fully intend to do. I do, but I still think that maybe we should have gone and have, if she caused the crash. Okay, 2279, judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very much, we're done. Thanks, court is adjourned. I figured it would go that way. Justice Porville, she was up there not telling the truth, and the judge saw right through it. That's just the type of person she is. She wanted to be in front. No, I am the president. I am the front of the pack. I do remember the impact. It, uh, slow motion. I thought she was dead. We all thought she was dead. It'll be a while before I get on any wheels at all. Look twice to save a life all day long. So one thing that was in the complaint that we didn't quite get to that I was interested in was the plaintiff says in her complaint that she made it clear to all of the women in the group that if they were to use her machines, her ATVs, her bikes, that they were responsible for both keeping gas in the tank, a full tank, and the liability on the bike. So my question going over that was, how did you make that clear exactly? I think what she meant was a strict liability. liability. You're trying to say that anything that happens when you're riding my bike, I made clear to them that that was there on them, right. their liability. And unless she had some writing that was signed by the members of this group, I'm not sure that you can impose liability in that way. You can, well, it's one-sided. You're absolutely right. It I think the right thing- some happened. sort of a writing mm -hmm so that you know that there's a meeting of the minds with regard to your responsibility if you're taking on the responsibility. Especially in an organized group like this, it wouldn't seem so far-fetched to have a writing saying, I'm the president of this group, I have a few extra bikes, but before you can ride them, I just need you to sign this <laughs> saying that if you damage it or return it with no gas, yes. I'm not responsible That's, for that. Yeah, so. like you do when you rent a car. Exactly. You can either accept it or reject it. But, but if, they can't impose it on so, you yeah, one-sided. Right. Understood. You're, you're right. Bailiff Cassandra Britt is standing in for Bailiff Kevin Roscoe, and Law Clerk Alexi Menser is sitting in for Law Clerk Sarah Rose. Isaiah Kamchan and Brandon Uloa are suing their former supplier, Manuel Garcia, for the cost of a t-shirt order. Order in the court, all rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 3072, Kamchan Uloa versus Garcia. Thank you. Who is Mr. Kamchan? You were starting up a business, t-shirt business. Correct. The defendant was also in business. He makes shirts. I assume you were having them made to sell them either online or at events. Correct. You don't have a store, is that right? Online store. Online. What's the name of your company? Risen Athletics. Reason? Risen. Risen. Spell Risen. it. R-I-Z-I-N. 
space, athletics. And where are they incorporated? Series, California. In the state of California? In the state of California. And it's a corporation. You have a license. You've incorporated it. Correct. Here. There's a website about nine items of clothing. May I see it, please? Sure. Make it go. <laughs> Could you go back to, okay, I just want to see where they order them from. Great. And what's the name of your company, sir? MFP Studios. MFP Studios. Correct. Where are you located? Los Angeles. How long have you been in business, Mr. Kamchen? About a year and a half. Did you make any money the first year you were in business? Yes. How much? Approximately 10,000, a little over. Nice. In that first year, did you get any merchandise from Mr. Garcia? We did. So you made some money from the merchant? Not from his uh, clothing, actually. Not from his. What other company do you deal with? Uh, we did wholesaling through Champion, the website. Champion is a wholesaler? I thought they were a uh, retailer. So they have a website where you can wholesale and buy a bunch of garments that they allow you to reprint on and sell. So that's what we did originally. I found an Instagram page for MFP Studios. The website is coming soon. I have the website currently closed right now. Currently closed. Yeah. You what? Yeah, our website opens and closes like periodically. So right now it's actually closed. But if you would like, I can go and open it for you guys. So you guys can take a look at it. I want to know why it closes, Mr. Garcia. Uh, what does just, that mean? So usually the way that my company works is that we do um, custom manufacturing for specific brands. So it's very customized. But at times I do produce blanks on my own while I'll put on my website. Currently we don't have any, so my website is closed until we produce them and then we post them on our website. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. How much money did the plaintiffs send you to produce t-shirts for them? How, how much money uh, for did the, the t-shirts? How much money did the plaintiffs send you to mm -hmm. produce t-shirts for them? And I'd like to see the order. Okay. Can I so see all the papers? Would be the, the invoices for the t-shirts. Thank you. Did they pay all of these invoices? Yes. Lex, would you add up these invoices for me, please? How many t-shirts were they supposed to have? Total should have been approximately 320. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. How many did they receive? That's what this case is about. Correct. They should have received at least 180. So about half. Correct. It's not true. Just, just a second. Okay. And you got paid. Correct. Well, at least for that number of shirts, they get their money back, right? They Duh. Again. For the number of t-shirts that mm -hmm. you didn't send them, they get their money back. Well, there was a couple other um, things that were taking into place. Um, so that's like kind of what? issue. So there was a lot of changes that were being made. Hold on a sec. Lexi. 7996. 7996 is the total of all those invoices. Great. All I'm saying to you, Mr. Garcia, this, mm -hmm. is, this is the case that we hear about. They're complaining that they got some T-shirts, but they were not what they ordered. You acknowledge that they didn't get half the T-shirts mm -hmm. at all. And you didn't make them, and your website is now offline. Well, that happens like every... I don't care. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't care. I don't know any other company that takes their website offline. I mean, I don't understand that. I could give you a list of a couple. I don't want you to give me a list of any. I want okay. you to tell me why they're not entitled to at least half their money back. So like I was stating, there was a bunch of other changes. So them not being happy with the garments that they received, that at the end of the day, I can't control. That is what they've ordered. I sent them pictures. I have- I'm talking about the ones that they didn't receive, sir, not the ones that they did. Okay. They were not happy, which they will tell me about, mm -hmm. about the half that they received. You acknowledge that you didn't send them half of the ones that they ordered. Correct. Well, why should they pay for those? That's what I'm asking you to answer. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm trying to explain. So there Well, was... try to explain it to me so that Alexi understands it. <laughs> He's much smarter than I am. So when it comes down to custom manufacturing, there's a lot of other um, components that come into place. There were a lot of changing designs. There was a lot of remaking of screens for us to get the design onto the T-shirt that we had to do that took up our time, that took up our money, that we didn't charge him for. So that's kind of where everything in terms of like the money goes to.
is what we're saying. It's like, okay, if you're going to be making all these changes and then you're not happy with it, if you can see, I have pictures of me sending them a print of the T-shirt and them saying, oh, the print looks different. At the end of the day, we don't work on the designs. We don't change their designs. Whatever they send us is what we put on the T-shirt. If it doesn't come right on the T-shirt, that is not our fault. We don't make the design. That sounds like a yada, yada, yada. He's claimed their former supplier, Manuel Garcia, did not properly fulfill their T-shirt order and owes them a refund. Let me see if I can give you the Reader's Digest of what he was saying and tell me if that's what you understood. Would you do that for me? They ordered 320 T-shirts for all intents and purposes and because of our easy math, he sent them half. They paid for 320. What he's saying is because they kept making changes, they spent more time on the half that they got. So they didn't feel that they had to send them the other half. Is that what you're getting? Yes. That's a duh. Do you understand? That's yeah. a duh. You know, I'm trying to think of an analogous situation for you. I'm a dentist's daughter. And I know that sometimes in my father's business, somebody would come in and he'd look at a tooth and he'd say, you know what? It's a simple filling, you know, and going to charge so much. And then he started to work. Patient said, okay, you know, that's a reasonable figure. And he started to work. And all of a sudden he found, well, there was a little something else in there that he really had to do in order to do what he said he could do for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so it took him more time. You think he charged the patient for that? No, he didn't. So you at least owe them half of what they sent you. They sent you $8,000. Let's make it nice and easy because I'm an easy girl. And you didn't send them half the T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about the T-shirts that you did send them. Because are we finished with the ones that he didn't? Yep. Yep. Now we're going to go to the ones that they did send. And you have to show me mm -hmm. why they were unsatisfactory. Pick it up. Perfect. So this is the sample that we received from him. So like the way samples work is he'll send us the clothing. We'll A-OK -okay it. So we A-OK -okay this. This is a large, by the way. Everything's perfect. Everything's great. OK, good. So let me show you the XL and the small. So this right here I'm holding is an XL. The, the difference. Can Eddie, I? You want to see another thing? Smaller. This is what I'm holding is a small. We ordered four small uh, sizes, small, medium, large, and XL. Hold now, on, I can I see the them, smalls? Yeah. Can I see? Oh, oh sorry. So, uh, hmm. There you go. No. Well, this could be a small, a big small, mm. but small. Can I see the extra small, please? Uh, extra large. Extra large? Yeah. yeah. Same exact size. They're the same size. The small and the extra large, if you hold them up together, they're exactly the same size. Lexi, hold these up together, would you please? Let me see. He said they're the same size. I don't think so. Could I? One certainly look bigger to me, but not, not a small and an extra large. Okay, now this is what I'd like you to do, Cassandra. I want you to send these over to the defendant and I'd like him to explain to me why these are the same size. One is labeled small, one is labeled extra large. This has nothing to do with a change of design. Mm -hmm. This has to do with almost math, which as we all know is not my strong suit. Okay, so now give me an explanation. So this has nothing to do with changing of the design. That has to do with two t-shirts that are exactly the same. One says small, one says extra large. Explain this it. This is a very simple fix. So there was just an issue with the tag and the labeling. Just a second. That's what you sent them. Yeah, I, that's Just exactly my explanation. No, well, this is for the actual garment. I, the, what I was referring to was the print on the design. This no, 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 I'm talking about the actual garment. Did you Correct. send that to them? I did send Just it. Just a second. You sent that to them with a label mm -hmm. that was mislabeled. Correct. Okay, how many of the mislabeled T-shirts did you send them? It's a very common mistake in manufacturing. I don't, don't I'm, give me I'm not sure they didn't give me a number of how, how many, many were how many? Exactly 73. You see, what the problem, Mr. Garcia, mm -hmm. is 
They can't sell those online because if somebody calls and orders a small and they send them a small, it's an extra large. Or if somebody calls and orders an extra large and they get it and it's got a small. And that could be easily fixed by just changing. Who the cares? Yeah. You know, my face could be easily fixed. <laughs> Both. Not uh, so easily anymore. These are all just fixed. Yeah. I mean, they can all be fixed yeah. when it, when it happens. It doesn't oh, okay. always like yeah, yeah. Have to be fit, no. yada 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 yada. Okay, so half you didn't send them, and seventy three you sent them wrong. Of the other half, seventy three you sent Labeled them wrong. wrong. Correct. You sent them wrong that they can't resell as you sent them online. I mean, they could send them to a pop up store and sell them for nothing. Or and say, you know, you try it on and see and see whether it fits you. But you can't sell them online. Otherwise, their business would be destroyed. Okay, what about the rest? Now we're finished so with the sizes. He has claimed to sent us over 180 shirts. That's incorrect. He sent us 123 exactly. You have any proof that you sent them 180 shirts? Uh, I had them in text messages, but I don't have that phone. But I mean, I'm sure that everybody. You know, everybody that has no case has no phone. I mean, I have Mr. Garcia. Everybody that has that no proof. Pictures, yes, everyone then show it to me that you sent them 180 shirts. Well, I don't have all 180 in the picture. I have, I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to count them, but. You want me to count them? You're in business. Mr. Garcia. Oh, you want don't, to her No, you're in business, sir. That's not the way you run a business. 120, they sent, and of the 120, how many were you able to sell? Out of the 120? Just a second. And out of the 120, is that include the 73 that were Wrong size? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that includes. So we're 70... left with only 50 that weren't labeled incorrectly. How many shirts did he send you that you were able to sell? Zero. We, we sold none of his shirts. Because they were mislabeled mm -hmm. or you mislabeled didn't get or them. Mislabeled or misprinted and didn't get them. Great. Do you have any text messages between the two of you? So, to... so many. Uh, anything in specific? I'd like you to show me one where you say to him, we cannot sell these shirts, they're the wrong oh, so size. We'll show you the demand letter. So we sent him a demand letter, hoping that he'd still like try to solve it outside of court, but he never replied to it and just never sent Sorry, us anything. Yeah, it'd be us telling him that the items received were not as promised and the other side would be the lawsuit issue. Okay. You say in this demand letter, that you are requesting, a f first of all, he doesn't communicate with you when you send him information back and forth. So you say, sir, since you do not wish to communicate us, here's an official demand letter. Yes. You say that you paid him $15,986. Correct. Correct. Well, that's not what your lawsuit is here. Isaiah Kamchan and Brandon Uloa have accused their former supplier, Manuel Garcia, of owing them a refund after sending the wrong T-shirts. Okay, did he send you any T-shirts? No T-shirts. So how much did you pay him? All in all, minus the setup fees that we're also suing for, it is exactly... No. Oh, sorry. I want to know where the 15986 comes from. We So in this order, we did order 320 pairs of shirts, but we also ordered... 240 pairs of shorts that we're not suing for. Why? He fulfilled that. He fulfilled the short section. He filled the short yeah, section. Yeah, he fulfilled the, the short. Is that what's on your website for sale? Yes. Yes. The, the shorts. Time. The Correct. shorts. The shorts. So it's just the, the t-shirts. Shirts. Yeah. shirts. So you did fulfill the order for the shorts. Correct. Do you have a pair of those shorts for me to see? I would just like oh, to take a look at them. No. Uh, we did not because we weren't aware. We weren't suing for those. No, I understand that. Did he get the shorts? Were they say the same screening as on those, or were they different? No, different screen. Different design. So different setup fees, different screens. We paid for that. We're not suing for that portion. We have Just invoices only... for them, though. Can I see? Yeah. yeah. Shorts. Of course, there were shorts on their website, right? It might be in there. Are they blue? It's right there. The blue, yeah, red, blue and black. red, and black. Blue, red, and black. And they just have a little design on yeah, it. Yeah, correct. These are okay. all invoices, but if you want to show a specific... And they were shirts, okay. They're going to be yeah, they're here. Okay. The, okay. Yeah, well, they're on your website, so you're selling yeah. them. Yeah, uh, so that's going to be shorts for prints, and we also... The t-shirts are not on their website, correct? There, there are some. There, Can okay. I see? There are two. One t-shirt. Yeah, right that's here. not it. One t-shirt. And that's not it. Okay, so the, those 
Those are not on the website. And, Got it. And one other, but that's also that's not, not it. A, that's certainly not those T-shirts. Not the same screen. Um, something missing in there is the invoice for the shorts material. We didn't bring. We are suing for the screens in that. That's the only reason that invoice is here, because he charged us for owning of screens and films that he told us we had to pay for that we owned and we never received as well. Screens and films. Yeah, so when- Tell me, explain that to me. So when making clothing, uh, you pay for garments and then you have to pay for screens and film. So screens is like these big metal square frames and then you put a did film Did you pay on. for those? Yes. We did, which are in those invoices. The only invoice we're missing is our shorts. Did you receive those screens? Well, I made them, so yeah, I had them. Did you charge them? You, yes, I did charge them for them. And where are they? They're, well, we don't turn in the screen. So you have a, so the way that screen printing works is that when you burn screen, you hold them for only two months. You don't store them for months and months on end. So after two months, if they're not being used, if we're not printing with them, we recycle them. Mm -hmm. The How film, I mean, the films is just a piece of paper that I, I do have handy, so. He told us that we own them and we can receive them whenever we want them for future references. So that's why we had asked for the demand. So you destroy them? Correct. Okay. So there we get to the $9,000. Actually, $9,100. Are you, Mr. Garcia, is your company incorporated in California? I forgot the answer to that question. Uh, uh it's no. not an answer. No, I, I mean, I'm self-employed. You're self-employed? Sorry. You have a company, you said? Yeah. Well, if you have a company, then you have to be incorporated. Well, I have like an LLC. Is that what you're referring to? Or an LLC. Do you yeah, have an LLC? I do have an LLC, yes. Do you have an LLC? What's the name of it? MFP Studios. Do you find that registered in the state of California? Is it registered, sir? It shouldn't. Yeah, but it probably won't be under that name. It would be under All Hills. Under what? All Hills. So a different name. I have, I mean, I have the paperwork. I don't know. I mean, doing business as MFP Studios. And that's just the way that I was set up. So when I got an LLC, it was through one, one of my business partners at first. So then he just gave How me How many that. business partners do you have? I just have one. Who well, he's that? not even a business partner. He just gave me the LLC so I could use Great. it. Great. Yeah. We're finished here. <sighs> you haven't used his services. I can't say company. You haven't right. used his services since? No. 2022. Correct. Okay. Got it. Judgment for the plaintiff for the amount of $9,100. We're finished. Thank My you, Your Honor. Is now Thank you. Close court of the judge. She sided with them, and I mean, I just gotta keep doing my business and just keep going, man. I like that she was able to see that he was clearly taking advantage of us, so I'm happy she saw the same thing we saw. It's just something that happens in this business. It happens more often than you think overseas. There's a bunch of cases. I don't know if she's familiar with the business, or I'm, I'm not sure. I just, I know that it happens often. It was an easy fix. They could have still sold the shirts, but I just think they, I don't know, they just didn't want to do it. Why would he bother sending these knowing we never agreed on it? If you've really been in the business, there's ways to do it where you can still sell it and make your money back to where you have a good relationship with your, your manufacturer. He never tried working with us. Like he would barely even respond. Like he actually stopped even communicating with me because I threatened to him once. So then he started communicating with him. But if you know, you come and you're just, yo, I want a full refund. It's, it's going to be very hard to even fix the issue versus just, you know, just. It's more of a fix the issue thing than get everything done all over again. But we, we tried, we tried our best for a whole year and nothing was happening. So that's when we're like, you know what? We can't let somebody walk all over us like this because it's our company. It's gonna be detrimental if we wait even longer because it was past a year. So that's when we decided to do The constant changes, they weren't comprehending with my time, my time schedules in terms of how I did things and it just, it didn't work out. They're also a long distance client. We, my clients usually come into my warehouse, we're more hands on, so I don't think it's a good fit. Definitely take baby steps, live and learn. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna fall a little bit. It's just how you get back up. A big lesson learned, for sure. <laughs> right to the occasion, that's what yeah. we always say. We'll be back better than ever. My biggest takeaway was the power of credibility. Those plaintiffs came in, they knew exactly how much they paid for each item, they knew exactly what they received, and they had receipts to back it up. And when you have your day in court, it's important you have your arms fully around your own case. Yeah. And it only made the defendant look that more implausible. Absolutely. Novice Sr. is suing his son, Marvin Novice Jr., for bail and attorney fees after his son was arrested. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 3087, Navez versus Navez. Thank you. You're welcome. How old are you, Mr. Navez? 
25. How long have you been living at home with your mother and father? All my life. Are you still living there? Not right now at the moment, no. Where are you living? With my grandma in Van Nuys. And you left because you had a disagreement with your father? A huge argument, yes, ma'am. Some time ago, you're going to tell me the date, police stopped you in your car, correct? Correct. On what date was that? Uh, about two years ago, Super Bowl Sunday, on uh, February 14th. On Valentine's Day? I believe so, ma'am. 2022? 2022, yes. And you were stopped because, according to what I read, you were smoking, but you must have been smoking something other than cigarettes. Uh, marijuana, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. In what state do you live? California. Was smoking marijuana in a car? You were the driver of the car, correct? Yes, ma'am. Is that illegal in the state of California? I believe so. I would say so, just like you can't have a bottle of vodka and drinking it while you're driving. And when the police stopped you for committing a crime, which endangered a lot of people because, you know, when you're not totally together, you're not supposed to be driving a car. They found two handguns. Correct. Who else was in the car? It's not funny. I happen to not think it's funny. I know that you <laughs> think it's funny, but it's not funny. I mean, I got off scot-free, so... I'm not, how I'm not many, facing 10 years. How now. many other people were in the car? I believe four other people had a full car. You know how many other people were in the car you were driving. I just said four, ma'am. Four others? Yeah. Full car. And where were the guns found, sir? I don't know. I was not the police, so... No, but you were in the car. Don't be a wise guy with me, because I eat people like you for breakfast. I don't think you're either cute or accomplished. (laughs) You're neither cute or accomplished. I know I'm cute. At age 25, you don't live on your own. You either live with your mother or your father. Then when they throw you out, you go and live with your grandmother. I neither think that you're cute or accomplished. Maybe young girls do. I'm an old lady. I fail to see your attractiveness, and I fail to see how any of this is funny. You ever see my smile, man? It's pretty attractive. It depends. Let me ask around. You find that attractive? No. Whitney, you're younger than I am. A little bit older than Sarah. You find that attractive? They want to get the job. It's not, it's, not, it's not only not attractive, but when your grandmother watches that, she's going to think you're a fool along with a lot of other people. And it's gonna be my joy, (laughs) my absolute joy to fill in the blanks. So you don't know where the two other guns were found and everything got thrown out. So now you have no adult criminal record. Correct. Did you have a juvenile criminal record? Answer the question, did you have a juvie record? Of course you did. Wise guys like you always have a juvie record. So when they book you, they put you in jail. Now, as a juvie, you had been taken into custody before, but I don't think that you had been put in an adult kind of situation, in an adult facility. So let me ask you a question. Did you call your girlfriend? Nope. Did you call your priest? Nope. Did you call your family physician? Nope. Yeah, I'll assume, for the record, Whitney, I'm going to assume that this accomplished 25-year-old who lives under the auspices of his parents or his grandma doesn't know how to say no or no, ma'am, or no, Your Honor. He says no. I assume, sir, that you are not a graduate of any university. Nope. No. See. So you didn't call any of those people who they gave you a phone call. Who did you call? I told I called my dad, tell him to get you me out. You just a second. You called your dad. <laughs> um, 24 years old. And I live with you. I got I was smoking in my car and they called me over and they're two guns and I'm in jail now. Yeah. What did you call your father for? To get me out. Why? That's is his job to protect me, right? You have kids? What? Right? You have kids, ma'am? Five and 13 grandchildren, one great grandchild. And I want to tell you something. This is one of them. And the last person they would call, (laughs) any of them, if they got pulled over smoking a joint and there were guns found, the very last person that they would call is me. (laughs) That's the very last person they would call. And 
they actually consider me a pretty good mother and grandmother. But they know, you're going to act like a fool, call somebody else. So you called your daddy. You called my your daddy. No, my you called your daddy. My father. You called, my you father. called, you called your daddy and you said, come and get me out. And he did. And he got you out. He paid a bail bondsman, which is what this case is about. You think this was going to be easy? Not easy. You don't mind my doing that to him, do you? No, ma'am. Great. Are you his mother? Yes, ma'am. Is he your only son? He's my only son. He's your only son. I could tell. <laughs> nothing against you, but you can always tell when a little boy has been pampered by his mother and thinks that he's the cat's meow, even though he's unaccomplished. And he got you out and he got you a lawyer. And that's what this case is about, Mr. Navis. Yes, ma'am. This is about the bail and the money that you spent on a lawyer. That he spent. Jump, jump. Don't that speak. That he if spent. you speak, if you speak, unless I speak to you, sir, I'm going to throw you out. Do you understand? Sorry. Or I'm going to tell Kevin to put you in your seat. Sorry, ma'am. Very good. So when I speak to you, like I did before, you can answer me. Now I'm speaking to your daddy. <laughs> you got a tax return. Novice Sr. claims his son, Marvin Novice Jr., owes for the cost of bail and attorney fees after his son was arrested for illegal firearms. Okay, so you are suing him for the... $2,800 or whatever it was for the bail bondsman. And you also paid an attorney $14,000. Yes, ma'am. Now, when you pay this money to the lawyer and to the bail bondsman, what kind of work was your son doing? Um, before that, he was working for a security company. Uh, okay. As a what? In the warehouse. So he was working at a minimum wage kind of job. Yes, ma'am. And so you knew that he didn't have $14,000 or $16,000. You knew that he didn't have that. And he's living with you instead of living on his own because he's not even earning enough money to have his own apartment or Thank to pay for his own gas, electric, utilities, water, heat, air conditioning. So he's living in his room, in his old room. Yes, ma'am. Ultimately, the case was Dismissed. It's not completely dismissed, ma'am. The statute of limitation hasn't, hasn't expired. So I, is the case still pending? Yes, because I, uh, I have this email that... Can I see what he's got? Yes, ma'am. So the case has not been dismissed? No, ma'am. The DA just hasn't filed on it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, got it now. Okay, so I can ask him anything else about these pending charges because right now his attorney's not here and his attorney would not like for me to do that. Now, was your son still working in the warehouse when you had this incident with him that caused him to move out? No, not when he moved out, ma'am. No. Where was he working? He, he wasn't. He, was, he got laid off. When did he get laid off? I got to say, probably like August. August of 2023? 2022. 22? Oh. That's 23. Shh. 23, I think. Well, but this is interesting, sir. That's oh, right. Because you say in your complaint that the charges were fully dropped against him in March of 2023, but that's not so. And that's what I, I, I assume, ma'am. Well, oh, no, it, but there wasn't, not according to this yeah, letter. No, uh, and the reason I got that, that email from, from the lawyer, ma'am, is because I, I reached out to her to ask her about uh, uh, the Bells Bond exoneration letter because my name was on the, on the Bells Bond. And then that's when she sent that email stating that. Okay, but, so now I want you to tell me, sir, you see... The boy. The man. The boy says that he never had an agreement with you. Never did. To pay. He never had an agreement with you to pay you back. And that what you did, you did because he's your son and you're his father. And the reason that you threw him out of the house was that you came home from work one day. What kind of work do you do? I'm in sales, ma'am. That you came home from work one day. He was not working. And he was, according to you, according to your papers, he was lying on the couch and smoking marijuana. Well, uh, the, that's what you say here. Yeah, the, uh, what, what happened, ma'am, is it was uh, on, a, on a weekend. 
I was drinking, uh, I was drinking a, a beer, and he and he went out. He would left, came back, and he smelled like marijuana, uh, in front of me. And and I said, then that's when I asked him. I go, if you got money to buy marijuana, how come you're not making me whole on this? You made some payments uh, on this because when he he filed the, uh, when he filed his income taxes on the years before, we will keep his his returns to put towards what he owned. Just a second. Is what you're telling me that you had an agreement with him for when he got a refund on his taxes that he would give you that money? Uh, Is he, that was, he was making payments before. He was making yes, payments. Yes, ma'am. How much did he make in payments? He made a, a, a total of about $2,500. Can I see the document that you're looking at? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this says that you did in fact make some payments to your father. Income tax return, and that was in April of 2023 that you did in fact make a payment to him of $1,222, is that correct? I believe so. If it says Just right a there. second. I'm asking you a question, boy. If it says right there, I don't recall that, so. Okay, do you recall that you got a refund on your taxes. In um, maybe, it could have been a stimulus check, I don't All know. All right, well, I can see I'm not getting anywhere with you because you're a moron. <laughs> and what you really don't know, sir, is how to read the room. And, you know, sometimes people learn that when they're very young. Sarah learned how to read the room when she was three. It doesn't require an education, it requires listening to what's going on around you. So if you listen to what I was asking you before, it's perfectly logical that your father might think that because you had money to go out and buy weed, you should be paying him. But in reality, he had no expectation of being repaid because he had either no job or a low paying job. That's a perfectly reasonable thing for me to think as a parent. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. but. When I ask you, and I'm sure that you remember, because we're not talking about something that happened 10 years ago, but a few months ago, you got a tax return, 1,200 bucks, and you gave it to your father. That's either a yes or a no. That's not I don't remember. I don't remember means that you're dull-witted. Are you dull-witted? No, no, ma'am. Okay, you're not dull-witted. You're a wise ass, but you're not dull-witted. <laughs> then you made several other payments. In April of 2022, you again gave your father $1,123. Does that sound familiar? Nope. No. He could have typed that up yesterday. He could have. Just a second. He could have. So what you're telling me is that you never made any payments to your father. Is not that, that I recall, ma'am. No, no, that's not an I, I don't recall. That means- Here, he's accusing his son. Marvin Navas Jr. for refusing to pay back bail money and attorney fees after his son was arrested. Now, if you in fact made payments to him, you would know. I don't remember exactly what they were, but I did pay him some money when I could, when I was working or when I got my tax return. You're a wise guy, but you're not dull-witted. So I want you to think hard. Don't give me I don't remember. Did you or did you not give your father your income tax refund in 2022 and 2023. Yes. Perfect. That's all we need to know. Now I know that you're just a wise guy, but you're not dull with it. Okay. So actually, the junior. Not a junior. You are, well, you are his junior. On Your last name is Navas? Navas. Navas. Well, he's the senior here today. You're the junior. If you say so, ma'am. Yes, I do say so. And I have to tell you, sir, that but for the fact that your son has acknowledged that he turned over to you his income tax returns as partial payment for this lawyer, I would actually dismiss your case. I'm telling you, I would dismiss your case because you actually did what a parent is supposed to do when their ne'er-do-well kid acts like a moron, smokes dope in a car with four other morons two of whom have guns, you know. But you don't want him to go to prison, and you've probably gone to pick him up at police stations before. Yes, ma'am. And he was young. Now he's getting older. 
The only thing that I can suggest to you is despite the fact that your wife adores him, you know, he's her baby, you have to let him stand on his own because he's a wise guy. And somebody's, somebody's going to hurt him one day. And that's ooh. somebody's going to hurt him one day. Ooh, and that's that's yeah. That's my that kind of fear. wise guy always gets himself into trouble. Always, but but for these two payments, I would have dismissed your case. However, he did make two payments, which he acknowledges. So the debt is real. He acknowledges that it was a debt by making two payments. Do you have the bill from the lawyer? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. Here's the bill. Here's the receipt, and this is what, what we paid. May I see the bill for the bail bondsman? Yes, ma'am. Here's the bill, bill, mm -hmm. bill, and then this is the email that will correspond with the, with the stuff with the lawyer. I got you an email that. Is he living with your mother or your wife's mother? My mother. Your mother? Yes, ma'am. How does she feel about that? She loves me. Shh. I she's, didn't ask you anything. You know, she's, she, she, loves, she loves him. Uh, she's torn up. Does she have anybody else living with her? My brother. Mm-hmm. And to the best of your knowledge, is your son working now? No, no I don't know. I'm not, I haven't spoken to him since, since May. This is the first time I've seen him. Are you currently employed? I'm looking for work. No, I'm not employed right now. I'm looking for work. Okay. Well, in case you find work, I'm entering a judgment on behalf of your father for $10,000, which is the court's legal limit. He paid the lawyer a minimum of $10,000, and he paid the bail bondsman. I would hope that your legal case ends well for you, sir. Appreciate it, ma'am. I do hope it ends well. And it seems to me that you have certain innate intelligence, if you waste it, it's your life that you're wasting, nobody else's. We're done here. Thank you. Come this court is adjourned. I don't think it was fair. You know, my dad spent his own money. He paid the lawyer himself. He got the bill bonds himself. I just made one call when I was in jail. I was very happy with it. Um, you know, uh, I needed to have this closure. I believe he was my dad. It was obligations to, you know, for his son to just get me out. Um, I don't think I want my dime. Well, you know, if that's what he thinks. What can I do? All, all he can do is be a father. He's not really a crier like that. So for him just to fake, fake cry in front of a judge, I think it's ridiculous. I just didn't want him to go and be in a situation that he'll be worse for him. To be honest, I won't speak to him for a very long time. If we reconcile, we reconcile. But my, my focus is just my three girls, my mom, my two little sisters. And hopefully our relationship and move on and get better. I'm cute, but not going to jail, man. Right? <laughs> it's just tough love, and I just got to learn that, you know, deal with it as they come and be prepared. You know, sometimes I take for granted the legal ease and the elements that are in the background of my mind when we listen to litigants out here. Because I know for you and for me, as soon as we heard that he made just one payment, that's acknowledgement of the debt. And therefore, he knew it wasn't just his dad being the best dad in the world, getting him out of jail, but a loan and an acknowledgement of a debt if, if he paid one payment. He didn't know that. <laughs> he thought that it was going to be great for him that he paid. He, I, I paid him. I gave him the money. The rest of it was just him being a good dad. You know, so he didn't know which way to go. He didn't know which way was up or down. He didn't know what was good for him, bad for him. But You know, what I found interesting about that young man is he clearly intelligent sure. and he spoke too much out of turn <laughs> but he was clearly articulate you know life is a journey it has a beginning a middle and unfortunately for everybody it has an end in between is your journey mm -hmm. and that is a wasted journey mm -hmm. because he's just a wise guy yeah. and he's not taking advantage of these wonderful innate gifts that he has of being able to communicate and yeah. being nice looking and looking healthy, just a waste. Yeah. And it's really too bad because the journey is finite. What you do with it is yours. Case number 3033, Helmanen versus Allen. All parties, please step forward. Mary Helmanen is suing her ex-boyfriend, Lamar Allen, for the balance of a cosmetic dental loan. Pronounce your last name. Helmanen. 
Mr. Allen was your boyfriend for a period of time? Yes. Doesn't appear to be a long period of time, relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. I think if my memory is correct, you met him in October online. Yeah. And by December, you were planning a trip to Colombia in order to have dental work done there, cosmetic dental work done. Yes. You suggested, according to what I've read, that he join you. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that at some point you said to him, you're really not comfortable traveling to South America by yourself? Yes. And that you would feel more comfortable if he came with you? Yes. At the time in October, November, and December of last year, what kind of work were you doing? I'm a nurse practitioner. How long have you been doing that? Since 2017. What kind of work do you do? I'm a firefighter. Fire. Now, Mr. Allen, I'm going to come to you. The plaintiff, a very lovely looking lady, wanted to get laminates. Laminates? Porcelain. Porcelain. Perfect. <laughs> I come from a long line of dentists. Okay. I was very bad in biology and chemistry, so I went to law school. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Yes. You have very nice teeth. Appreciate it. Thank you. Who paid for them? Uh, Mary did. So, Mr. Allen, what I want you to do is explain to me, I understand that the plaintiff was going to Columbia mm -hmm. to get her dental work done because it was cheaper there. Mm -hmm. And that you were short-term then boyfriend, which is over now, I yes, assume. Yes, correct. I want you to tell me how it came about that you went to Columbia with her and got your teeth done. Okay. Never thought my teeth was an issue as far as us dating. Then we got there to Columbia. So you didn't discuss your teeth being done before you got to Columbia? Correct. You're kidding me. Correct. You were just going to go. Who booked the tickets? Mary did. Who paid for them? Mary did. Who booked the hotel? Mary did. Who paid for the hotel? Mary did. We did talk about it before. So, shh, just a minute. Mr. Allen, I want you to be very, very careful with me because I read her complaint and I read your answer. Mm -hmm. And the complaint suggested that you had a price for your teeth yes. before you got there. Yes. Well, if you had a price for your dental work, cosmetic dental mm -hmm. work, before you got there, you had to have had some discussion about paying for it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Well, tell me what that discussion was. After she brought it up, then I researched for us, I sent them information for us with my teeth for us, like how much Okay, so who, you, when you researched it, she gave you the name of the, the, pe the, 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 the people dental. she was going Correct. to see in Columbia? I was uh, writing them back, back and forth through... Uh, how are you writing? Instagram. They had a page. Okay, so yeah. who was writing them? You were writing yes, them. Yes, correct. Okay, so then it's a fair statement that you had a price from them before you went there. Yes. Now, how much was your dental work? 4200 Ultimately, how much was your dental work? Came to 8000 How much were you quoted before in this back and forth Instagram that you were doing? How much were you quoted? Uh, it was roughly around 6000 they quoted me. Let me see. I don't have it, I don't have it with me. Why not? Where did you think you were going today? Mary Helminen claims her ex-boyfriend, Lamar Allen, owes for the balance of a cosmetic dental loan. I'd like to see any evidence that you have. You I have do. nothing. What is that that you're showing? So me? I have the credit card information. I don't need the credit paying. card information. You paid for him. Right. And you paid for him in December of 2022. Yes. You paid for him to go. You paid for his... I want to see something from December of 2022 or January or February. Now, when did you break up? Uh, we broke up in December. In December, when Correct. you came back? Yes. Okay, something either in December, January, or February where you ask him for the money that you claim that he owes you. Show me. Okay. Text message. I have a lot of okay. that. Good. I'd like to see him. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The dates are on the top. Shh. Yes, I'm definitely going to pay you back. I'm not going to leave you hanging, especially not owing $8,000. Seriously. Is that what you wrote to her? Yes. I said I was going to pay you the difference. No, that's not what you say here. I know. Well, I, was, I just said, you... I said that during this Get off my back for our I'm site. definitely not. I'm definitely, she says, take out a personal loan. You say, I'm definitely not going to do that. Correct. I'll start paying you off. Correct. Or I'll start paying the credit card off. She said, I paid the credit card off. 
Yes, I'm definitely going to pay you back. I'm not going to leave you with $8,000. Well, then start. I'm not playing your games. I did you a favor. What's a Meeks? Oh, it's my dog. So your dog got lost. Yeah. My and dog. that was your priority in February. Yeah, of yeah. course. My dog was and 20 my, weeks from November. Main, that's when you family. told me. So I hopefully it'll be April and April 19th. So that's when you told her you would be able to pay her back. Yeah, because I always gave him the date. I don't care. Well, there's no question based on this, sir, that you agreed to pay her back $8,000, which is what your dental bill was. At first, I didn't want to get him done when I got there. What? I said, I did not want to get him done when I got there. After they said the price was different, I told her no. I said, I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to make you pay that much. So I told her no. Not in these emails. You got the teeth, she got the bill. I told her not to do it when it happened. You had to I go like no. this. Look, I, what, look at me. You had to go like this. No, she agreed. She said, well, no, no, I, she, she said, I'll pay for him. She said, well, we're already here. I'll pay for him. I said, no, I, I don't want to do it. It's too much money. So I said, no. Listen to me. You said, no. You had yes. to go like this. But she said, <laughs> but she said, I, she said, I'll do it. She's like, oh, well, I'll pay for it. Don't worry about it. Just pay me whatever, just pay me whenever you get your money. <sighs> so I agree with paying the difference, which is three grand. Like, I'm not going to pay her the whole eight, eight grand. She may have found you adorable. Other people may find you adorable. Me, not so much. Maybe because I'm old. You told her you were going to give her back the $8,000 that it costs to do your teeth. You told her that in February. You said, I'm going to give it back to you. I'm just waiting for my refund check from the IRS. Then it was your dog that got lost. Did you ever find your dog? Yes, I did. Oh, that's good. I'm happy for you. Appreciate it. And I'm happy for you that you have nice new teeth and that you have a nice smile. You owe her $8,000. Did you have a nice trip to Columbia? She flew you there. She put you up in a hotel. I don't know who paid for the meals. I paid I for the meals. I paid for everything prior to that. And after that, like, I was paying it back in... Because we're together, we're a, we're a couple. Yes, then you were a couple. Now you're not a couple anymore. Someone else is going to look at those pearlies and say, I love you. Do you understand? You have to pay for that. You know, you have to pay for that. You're a responsible man. You have a responsible job. Take care of yourself. That's what you're supposed to do. No, if you let a woman take care of you, no it's woman not take care that... What if you let a woman take care of you, you're not taking care of yourself. You're a big, strong guy. And you told her you were going to pay her. That's what you did. So you got to pay her, Mr. Allen. You have to stop being a big baby. You have to pay her. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $8,000. We're done. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I said no one was there. I came, we was like, well, I just paid you the difference, not the whole full amount. I'm happy with her decision. It was fair. She said, well, I, I pay for it. I, I, it'll, be a, it'll be a gift for you. So I'm like, okay, well, then I, I'll do it. I would have never given him $8,000 for free. I guess everything changes when you break up. I was really patient with him in paying me back, and I've never seen a cent. Don't trust women. He's got his teeth forever, you know? I got a great smile, so I guess it's okay. I'm not going to buy any one teeth. I think it's always risky to go to another country for any medical procedure. I mean, I'm familiar with U.S. laws, not so familiar with Colombia or anywhere else or the guarantees for any sort of health procedure. I mean, worst case scenario, you don't come home. Best case scenario, you have cheap dental work. So I... Or cheap cosmetic... <laughs> exactly. Any type of surgery. Yeah, I but it's always a risk in, in multiple forums, in your health, in your payment of money to a, another country that you're unfamiliar with their entire banking systems and how that works. I just, it seems very complicated. They're very complicated. And I don't know if you remember, recently a group of women went to Mexico. One of them went to have some cosmetic procedure and it was dangerous there. Yeah. And one of them ended up not coming home. Exactly. At the end I'm, of the day, he has the teeth. At the end of the day, he has she the teeth. She has the credit card bill. Now, at least it's, she's, she's repaid. And I understand why some people with the cost of medical cosmetic work here in the United States would feel compelled to look somewhere to get it done cheaper. And, you know, most people who have any kind of cosmetic work done, whether it be dental or otherwise, interview the doctor or dentist before, have consultations. There you're just going and saying, here I am, it's fix risky. me. And I think that that's a, very risky thing to do, although his teeth look terrific. <laughs> is suing his former friend, Tony Woods, for car damages after a night of drinking and driving. Court come to order. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. 
Case number 2018, Gray versus Woods. Thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Everybody sober today? <laughs> yes? Man, yes, man. Yes. Yes. yes? yes. You? Yes, I'm sober. Yes? Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Everybody. <laughs> okay, good. You two gentlemen know each other. You went out for an evening. I assume there was some drinking and your car got totaled. Yes, ma'am. It is your claim that the defendant was driving your car when it got totaled. Yes. The defendant says, well, he was drinking a little bit, but he says that you don't remember because you were so blotto that you were driving. <laughs> right? Yes. So that's what the case is about. Simple. Two drunks. Nobody knows who was driving the car when it got totaled. <laughs> Let's see if we can decipher it. If we can't, I may not care. <laughs> You're not supposed to be in a car when you're drunk. Otherwise, you can kill a lot of people, as we all know, right? Yes, ma'am. Want to drive drunk and kill yourself, that's one thing. Right? You take a lot of other people down, and sometimes you make it out. So you have to be understanding to the fact that the judicial system really doesn't give a rat's behind if the two of you were drunk and in a car, and neither one of you was together enough to know who was driving the car. Yeah. When did this incident happen? It was November 27th, 2021. How long have you known Mr. Woods, Mr. Gray? I've known Mr. Woods about 20 years, I would say. So you've known him since you were kids? Yeah, since high school. And you have gone out frequently? Yes. Does he come to your house? Yes. You go to his house? Occasionally, yes. Occasionally. And where were you going on the 27th of November? We were going downtown Ann Arbor to attend some festivities from the Michigan versus Ohio State football game. To a football event. Yeah. How did Mr. Woods get downtown? Well, you I got dropped off. By whom? Uh, my friend. Friend's name? Um, Lauren. And where did she drop you off? Um, she dropped me off in front of the Starbucks downtown where they were waiting because they were drunk. I didn't drink. They Just drink. a second. Lauren dropped you off at Starbucks. Where were you supposed to go from Starbucks? We were supposed to go um, to a club and hang out after the game. So you first went to the game? No, they went downtown right after the game. And I came to meet up to hang out. So it was all after the game? Yes, yes, yes. What time did Lauren drop Mr. Woods off at Starbucks? I would say it was around like 3 Four o'clock. In the afternoon? I believe so. What time did Lauren drop you off? It had to be about 5.30, 6 o'clock. And when you say it had to be 5.30 or 6 o'clock, how do you know that? Because the game was over. I don't know. I don't watch football, so I don't know when it starts and when it finished. Do you remember what time the game finished? No, I don't remember exactly. Okay, so let's say Lauren dropped you off at 5.30. How did you set the time for Mr. Woods to meet you so that he could join your party? The game is over different times. Did you text him? Did he call you? So on the way, we had left from my barbershop, me and my witness here, Mo Chow. So you weren't at the game. You were in a barbershop. Yeah, we were at the barbershop at first. We watched the game. Oh, you watched. So at, you didn't go to the game. We didn't attend the actual game, no. Okay. We watched the game at the How bar- many people, you, Mohammed, and who else watched the game at the barbershop? I mean, the barbershop was full of, we were still working at the time. We had left work after the game was over to go downtown to... Were you watching the game or were you working? I was doing both. Mm. I would have hated to be your last haircut. (laughs) No, actually, it wasn't a lot of people there because that was the biggest game of Michigan's season, the last game, Ohio State. It's a big rivalry, so nobody was in our barbershop. So it was just party? Mm. It was... It was just party. You know, I'm old, so, you know... (laughs) It was just party. You said, uh, Mohammed. It was a party. Yeah. It was just party. Okay. So you left the barbershop, but how did you find out to meet them at the Starbucks? Uh, we have been communicating through text. So you knew what time they were leaving the barbershop, and then you got uh, dropped off. Actually, now, what were you doing with Lauren? I was waiting to get to them. Where were you? Before? I was at home. I watched the game at home. With Lauren? No, with myself. Well, how'd you get Lauren to take you to Starbucks? Oh, I just asked her and gave her some gas money. Okay, so now you're at Starbucks, you meet up, and who's driving? I was driving. Okay, and that would have been a mistake. Excuse me? That would have been a mistake. I wouldn't get behind the wheel of a car, sir, if I was at a party all afternoon watching a big football game. Uh, Ma'am, I wasn't at a party. I was at my barbershop. I know you were at your barbershop. Yeah. (laughs) Look at Mohammed. I know you were at your barbershop, sir. There have been any drinking going on at that time. There was no drinking in the barbershop, Mohammed? 
Oh. There was there was people participating. Some people weren't. Some people okay. were. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't participating. All right. Okay. So now you go from this party in the barbershop all afternoon from this very big game, and you pick him up, and where were you going? At that point, we decided to go to a bar. Where was the bar? I'm not familiar with downtown Ann Arbor area, but, like, it was a bar that was suggested by... Stand up next to him. He's not familiar with a whole lot of things. You suggested a particular bar, Mohammed? Yeah, uh, the... How far is that from the Starbucks where he was dropped off? About a couple blocks over. Okay, and you were in the car? I was in the car. Were you sitting in the front or the back when you picked up Mr. Woods? I was sitting in the passenger seat at this point. So Mr. Woods got in the back? Yes, he did. And you were going a couple of blocks to the bar? Yeah. Step by step, what happened next? So traffic is jam-packed down there, so we're really just inching to the bar. We get to the bar, we go inside, we have a couple drinks. um, Okay, so now it's maybe 6 o'clock, 6.30? Yeah. Dark outside. And you have a couple of drinks at the bar. A couple of drinks, yeah. What were you drinking? I was drinking water. That's not a drink that they like to serve at a bar. I'm, I was a designated driver, so okay. I, well, after we left the bar. Okay, so you were the designated driver, yeah. and Mr. Gray was drinking. Yes. What was he drinking? I don't remember what his drink is. You remember what you were drinking? Yes, ma'am. What? I had one beer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even he can't keep a straight face. You know, it's, it's hard. It just, don't speak. Now, you were the designated driver. When were you designated the designated driver? Well, so think very careful. Before you answer my questions, you know, okay. I'm already two steps ahead of this game. I've, I've watched, when were you? Yeah. I've watched you on TV. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> when were you designated the designated driver? When we left the bar, I was the designated driver. No, no. So it was when you left the bar. Yes. And who designated you the designated driver? Well, I, I kind of designated myself. I'm pretty familiar with the Ann Arbor area. It's actually my idea to go downtown. So. So you asked Mr. Gray if you could drive. Yeah, I thought it would be the best idea. And Mr. Gray said okay. Yes, he did. So you drove, and where were you going from the bar? To another bar. Better pickings at the other bar. Uh, just bar hopping. You know, college downtown football. Okay, and what's the name of that bar? Uh, where do we go from there? No, no, no! Speak. Yes, I look at you. The name of the other bar. Okay, now he helped you with that, right? Love, yeah, he jogged my memory a little bit. He I jogged your it. memory. Yeah. So if he knew the bar, why did you have to be the designated driver? I don't think I understand your question. It's very easy. You said you were the designated driver because you know that area. Right, I'm, I'm saying I didn't remember and what he, bar we went to. I, I'm very familiar with the area. I just didn't remember what bar we were going to that night. Okay. What happened when you got to the second bar? We had some more drinks and... We, um, we had some more drinks? Yes. What was Mr. Gray drinking? You know, I don't... I was talking to some other friends that I met up with there. He was off doing his own thing. I don't remember what he was drinking. What were you drinking? Water still at this point. Water. Yeah. I like to stay hydrated. <laughs> hey, claims his former friend, Tony Woods, drove drunk and crashed his car. Tony says Daniel was the one driving drunk and wrecked his own car. Okay, so now you had a couple of drinks. You had another glass of water. Yes. Mr. Gray and Mr. Woods both were drinking alcohol. And what happened next? We left there. We went to get something to eat. At this, Where point, did you go to eat? We went to, what's the name of that place? Uh, I don't know the name of the place, and he's not going to tell you. It's, it's a hot dog place. It's right around the corner from where we was drinking. And then what happened there? We got something to eat. Okay, uh, do you remember what time that was? You know, I, I really don't. Well, you've been already to... Two a bars bar, and a yeah. place to eat. So, And if you started out at 6 o'clock, mm-hmm. it had to be closer to 9 or 10 o'clock. Right, yeah. Okay, and then what happened? Came out of the restaurant. And? and uh, Do you remember what you had at the restaurant? I had some waffle fries. And do you remember what Mr. Gray ate? He had a hot dog. And do you remember what Mr. Woods ate? He also had a hot dog. Good. So you came out of the restaurant. Do you remember who paid the bill? I think we all paid separately. Okay, so now you come out of the restaurant. Yeah, we come out the restaurant. We had eight already. And this one, uh, Mr. Woods over here started horse playing a little bit, charged at me from across the street. You know, I tried to get him. But just a second. Okay. How did he get across the street? Well, the restaurant was across the street. We parked across the street from the restaurant. Okay, I got so it. So I had already got back to the car. Okay. And Mr. Woods over here started horse playing, and he ran across the street and tried tackling me, and he got me around my waist. I tried to put him in a headlock, but. You see the size of his head. <laughs> um, and it, that just continued throughout the night, this horse playing. No, no, no. 
So he's horse playing with you. Right. But you get into the car. You said if you continued all during the night. What I want to know is, from the place where they got hot dogs and you got waffle fries, mm -hmm. did you get back into the car? We did get back into the car. We went one more place. Okay. Now, when you got back into the car after the two dogs and the fries, mm -hmm. who was driving? At that point, I think I was still driving. Not think. I, I believe, don't want to think. I believe I was driving. I dropped myself off to my next destination because I separated from them, too. You went to one other place? Uh, yeah. With them? With the three of them, yes. And when you got to the other place, you went in or you did not go in? I went inside, yeah. Okay. Did you stay there? I did stay there. And what about the two of them? They went wherever they went. I don't Back to the barbershop, I believe. And you were the designated driver. Up until So the you were drinking the water. Yes. And they were both drinking alcohol. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, what do you mean, yeah? Uh, <laughs> you go to at least two bars, maybe three. You have a whole afternoon of drinking at a barbershop. Not you, you were drinking water. Water, yeah. I don't know what then, they cook. Then you get dropped off. You was the designated driver. Now, they're nowhere near home. So you knew one of them was going to be driving. Right. And as far as your testimony is concerned, you were left in the last place that you visited. They went out to go someplace else or go back to the barbershop. Right. Did you see them again that evening? Um, uh, it's not an answer. I mean, we're coming to court today. You know, it's not a photo shoot. You came here for testimony. I don't believe I seen them that night again. No, I'm just talking about that night. That's what we're talking about, that I, night. This is the night of the accident, the 27th of November, 2021. I didn't see them again. You're in a club. You don't know what happened. Now, when they dropped you off, did you go outside with them or did you just stay in the club? I stayed inside. So you don't know anything else? What happened after that? But now you can sit. Thank you. Okay. Now, your witness, the designated water drinking driver, has dropped himself off and the two of you go outside. What happened? After he gets dropped off, we are parked at a bar and... Just a second. He stays there. You get into the car because you're going to another bar. No, not at this point. Where were you going? I was getting ready to go to my barbershop. He's not with you. Who was driving? I was driving at that point. Okay. And you were driving to take yourself back, according to you, to the barbershop. Yes. And then what happened? Okay, so we get to the barbershop, and I leave the car running. He's in the car with me. Just a sec. Got to the barbershop, and you left the car running for what reason? Because it was, it was cold outside. It was snow. It was... Uh, it's November. Well, what were you going to the barbershop for? I went to the barbershop because I needed to use the restroom. And the barbershop is close by to this last bar you were at? Yes. How close? Maybe like two miles. Okay. So you went to the barbershop. You left the car running and... So I go in to use the restroom and I leave the car running and Mr. Woods was sitting in the car still. So as I'm in the restroom, he comes in and start knocking on the door and says that he had lost his phone when he had got out, out the car where we were parked at. Where? The last bar that we were at. I didn't actually go into the last bar. We was parked there. We were about to go in to, to meet up with him. What do you mean to meet up with him? He was with you. As he said, he, got, he met up with another friend. He didn't tell me that. He said you just dropped him off at the other bar and you weren't going in, just he was going in. You dropped him off. That's what he said. No, he went in. I understand he went in. I, I never went in the last bar. Okay, you didn't go and neither did he. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm asking you, he said I lost my phone someplace. No, where we were parked at, he, he got out the car for a second. I never got out the car. He got out the car for a second. And at What was he doing when he got out of the car for a second? He thought we were about to go in, but I said, I told him that I needed to use the restroom. So he got back in the car. But at some point when he got out the car, he dropped his phone. So I told him I needed to use the restroom. So I go to my shop to use the restroom. I park the car. Got it. I get out. I leave the car running. I go in, use the restroom. He comes in, knocks on the door, telling me that, hey, yo, I lost my phone. Can I drive the car? Let me go pick it up real quick. And I tell him no. Like, just wait, I'll be out in a second. So he leaves, I hear the door open and close. I'm thinking that he's just going to sit back in the car. So when I come out of the restroom, my car is gone. I call him and he, he's not answering the phone. So I keep calling, I keep calling. And then the next, like 10 minutes later, he answers the phone. 
So I knew he went to go get his phone. He I, found his phone. Yes, and I'm I'm furious at this point because he just left me in my at shop. the barber shop. Yeah, in my car. So I tell him, you know, bring my car back right now. You know, he said I'm on my way. I'll be there in a minute. About 15 minutes later, he called me and say, Yo, man, you gonna kill me, man? I just I just crashed your car. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Mm-hmm. And I had to walk all the way to the accident scene to the car where he crashed my car at. Now, you have an accident I, report? No, I don't have an accident report. Why? Be- because we, we never called the police. That's because probably a good idea. Because he wasn't involved with another car. He just hit a pole. I understand that. That's still an accident report. The only reason you don't call the police is because both of you were drinking. Well, I, I wasn't driving the car at that time. Well, you were driving the car to the barbershop, right? Yes. From the last bar where you dropped Mohammed off, you were driving. Yes, but I was not drunk, though, Yana. If you're not drinking, you know, it's sort of an interesting thing. Everybody's definition of drunk is different. Your friend Mohammed said that he was the designated driver, so he was just drinking water. That's what he said. That's what Mohammed Which suggests to me that we had a full day of drinking, starting at the barbershop, watching the game, from the game to two or three bars, then for a bite to eat. No. Nope. I wasn't drinking at the barbershop. I didn't start drinking until we got to the first bar. Okay, so now you started to drink at six o'clock. Now it's 10 o'clock and you've been drinking from one place to another. I'm just saying you got behind the wheel of the car and you had been drinking. Now, did you hit a pole? No, Your Honor. Okay, now you tell me your version of the events. Gray has accused his former friend, Tony Woods, of driving drunk and wrecking his car. Okay, now you tell me your version of the events. Okay, first off, I ain't eat no hot dog, so I never- You didn't what? I never had a hot dog. Never okay, hot dog. strike the hot dog. No hot dog. Whitney, it's true. Oh. He denies the, record, the hot dog. I didn't eat a hot dog either. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. He denies the hot dog. Okay, so, so for, for what happened after they got in the car, first, they were very drunk. Just a second. You don't have to tell me. All three of you were drunk. I wasn't drunk yet. (laughs) Okay. By the time the car got trashed, you were drunk. Let me tell you what I believe. Okay. So that you can pick it up from there. Okay. I believe that Mohammed was dropped off at the last bar. So there came a time at the end of the evening when it was just the two of you. I don't know who was driving. I don't know who was the passenger. But I believe that they dropped him off because otherwise Mohammed, who appears here as a witness today, would have had a better story because he says, I don't know what happened afterwards, you know, Mm -hmm. because I wasn't there. So there was a time at the end of the evening that just the two of you were in the car. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay. Can I tell you before that part, though? Because he was driving down the wrong way of the street. But there's no question in my mind he shouldn't have been behind the wheel of a car. And that's when I lost my, my phone and my wallet and we were wrestling in the street. He actually attacked me. Let's move forward. Okay. There came a time when just the two of you were in the car. Okay. When was that? Well, we were sitting in front of a bar that we we're about to go to. I got out the car and I dropped my phone. At that time... I asked him to take me back to get... No, no, no. You dropped your phone. And you didn't know you dropped your phone because if you knew you dropped your phone, you would have picked it up. Right. Correct. Right. So then you got back into the car. Driver's seat or passenger seat? I was in the passenger seat. And Mr. Gray was driving? Yes. And Mr. Mohammed was at the bar? Yes, he was with a friend. He had gone to the bar. So it was the two of you. You're in the passenger seat. He's driving. And he's drunk. Yes. And you went back to the barbershop for him to use the restroom. Just follow, because there was a time when you wanted to go back to look for your dropped phone. Do you understand? Correct. Now, he goes back to the barbershop. How long was he in the restroom before you realized that you had dropped your phone? About five minutes. And you realized that you had dropped your phone because you tried to make a call while you were waiting for him. Correct. And it was snow on the ground, correct. And it was snowing and he didn't have a frankfurter. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. So now he's gone in to use the restroom. You go and look for your phone. You see how easy this is like? (laughs) It's like fishing in a fish tank. (laughs) You went inside. And what did you do when you went inside when you realized that you had lost your phone? I told him, let's go get my phone. And he drove us and we didn't got the phone. Okay. So he came out of the restroom. You got back into the passenger seat of the car. Correct. And he got into the driver's seat of the car. Correct. Uh-huh. And what happened? Then we uh, called Mohammed to try to uh, meet back up with him after we got my phone. And then- no, 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 no. Step slowly he turned. Step by step. 
inch by inch. Now you're in the car, on your way back to the bar where Mohammed is to look for your phone. I got drunk. I, I think I blacked out after that point. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to your answer. According to your answer, you knew exactly what happened, sir. What do you mean you blacked out? You I mean, signed the sworn got, I know, statement. I know we got the phone. I got the phone. Baby. Well, I know you got the phone. So you had to have driven back there successfully to get the phone. Yes. And is it at that point that you get back into the car and you blacked out? No, it was just I got really drunk after getting my phone. Like after that, I just... You don't remember what happened? I remember getting my phone and being drunk. Like, I, yeah, I got my phone. Okie dokie, there we go. Okay, you were all drunk. As a matter of fact, I have zero sympathy for any of you getting behind the wheel of a car. Okay, the car was damaged. Yes, I have. And so what you want me to believe, that you blame him, and I could understand that because I don't know how drunk you actually were, whether or not you blame him for your wrecked car because you were driving the car back to find his phone and it wouldn't have been in that problem had he not dropped his phone out of the car or whether he was actually driving the car drunk. It's actually irrelevant to me. You were both driving drunk. You have a bill to fix the car? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. And I have pictures of the accident. Okay, so, well. yeah. So the bill was $5,500. And you had insurance? Yes. And the insurance paid for how much? I had no fault insurance. So you didn't have... I didn't have collision. Okay. You didn't have collision, so you had to pay $5,500, which you paid. Yes. Divide that by two. Twenty-seven fifty. That's what I thought. So, Mr. Gray, there are some lessons that you learn, and I don't know whether... Other courts would agree. I have to make a determination as to credibility. And quite frankly, I can't determine between two drunks who's telling me the truth. Because on the 27th of November, both of you were in no condition to drive a car. And I can't tell who actually drove the car at the time that it was wrecked. But I do know that you drove the car from a club to your barbershop and that neither one of you stayed at the scene, called the police because both of you were inebriated and knew that either one or both of you were going to get busted for a DUI because you both drove the car that evening. What? Ma'am, I was not drunk at the time that this happened. I was I did go to the bars, but I wasn't in the bars drinking that I had one beer. 2750. We're done. This court is adjourned. I feel like he kind of got the story wrong because I wasn't drunk, but... I think that was very fair. I feel like, you know, the judge was very reasonable. I had one beer that day, but, I mean, there's a limit to, like, being drunk in the state of Michigan. It was just one of those drunk things, you know, but we got it taken care of. I wanted to make him look like my vehicle. It was very snowy outside, and, you know, something happened, and I don't remember. I didn't do anything. I just called I just called up tow truck and tried to get the situation solved. And uh, I'm very happy to get this case behind me. Satisfied I got something out of the deal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully we can get back to being friends. You know, he's a good guy. I'm surprised you gave them anything. You know, unclean hands don't deserve money from this court, as we've seen time and again. So I'm surprised, really, that you gave him even half of what he was asking, because you couldn't tell which one of them was credible, if either of them were credible. And so what are you supposed to do? I mean, I guess splitting it down the middle was, I understand why you made your judgment, but But I would have taught him a lesson, given him nothing. Interesting. Interesting. Drunk driving is not, nothing to play around with. Yeah. Very serious. I'm glad glad in the DNA it's getting tougher (laughs) rather than softer. Oh, yeah. Okay, (laughs) good. Yeah. You may be right. You may be right. I just felt that they were both at fault. Mm-hmm. And either you leave the parties where they are, yeah. or you say both of you have to hurt a little. Yep. I uh, but I actually understand. Brandon Handyman, Brandon Hall, for check fraud and filing a false restraining order. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Hi. Case number 2046, Rapp versus Hall. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Rapp. Not a very difficult case. The defendant was a friend of yours, slash did some work for you. It's not really relevant how you met him. It was sort of through a social situation. And it is your claim that over a period of time, Mr. Rapp forged your signature to several checks. 
Correct. And then when confronted by the fact that you've discovered these forgeries and asked him for money, he filed a restraining order against you to keep you away from him. And you say that the restraining order was a false one and you want to be compensated for having to deal with that. I do. I miss work. Just a second. So I'm going to deal with the restraining order first. When did you file a restraining order, Mr. Hall? I believe it was the 17th of July. Of this year? Yes, ma'am. So not so long ago. I'd like to see the paperwork that you filed in support, just the paperwork that you gave to the court in support of your restraining order, why you were asking for a restraining order. Okay. Don't tell me. Is that what you filed with the court? Yes. I'd like to see. So let's just be clear. You filed all these documents with the court when you asked for a restraining order. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've read some of the text messages and you're aware of what the text messages say. Yes. I assume you're aware of what they say. Uncross your hands. Oh, yes. And that part of your application for damages as a result of filing a false restraining order is denied. You can't even suggest in a text message that you're going to do something violent in order to get him to pay money that you owe. Do you understand that? I do. Okay. So... As Although frustrated, the restraining order was dismissed. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, I've read it, and some of your text messages sound threatening. I was angry. I understand you were angry. The question is not whether he should be granted a restraining order. I don't have to deal with that. I have to deal with the fact that in the text messages, you make certain threats. What if I could and all that transpired at a time when the defendant reconciled with his wife and family. So, as I said, as a result of reading your text messages, I believe that Mr. Hall had the right to feel threatened and to file for a restraining order. Whether the court that heard the application for a restraining order felt that your behavior warranted a restraining order is another thing. But I can understand why he would file a restraining order to try to keep you away from him and his family. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Great. Now I want you to tell me why you forged her name to checks. Because she... (laughs) $8,800 worth of checks. Now you have the right to file a restraining order. Because she asked me to do this. Because she asked you to forge her name to the checks. Yes. Okay. I want you to tell me when the first time she asked you to forge her name to a check. Um... And I assume, just like you've kept all these documents. Yes, ma'am. You have a document to show me just one. Because if you show me one, I would tend to think that there are more. So just show me one where she said to you, forge my name to a check. Okay. Take the money out and forge my name to a check. Don't say anything. Just show me. Don't shake your head. It's fine. I believe this is the first one. Okay. So in that one, she asks you to sign. Well, I maybe. What are you showing me? The check. I don't want to see the check. You know how you kept these text messages that you texted back and forth and back and forth? I want you to show me, because you're methodical, one time out of the six, seven times that you forged her name to checks, show me one time where she said to you in a text message in an Instagram, in a pigeon note, where she said to you, take out a check from my checkbook and forge my name to it because I want you to have money. Just show I don't, me. I don't have Of course like not. That. No. Of course no. not. I don't. Now, the first time you forged her name to a check was what month and year? I believe that it was December 9th. Of 2021. Uh, yes, ma'am. And what we, you and Miss Rapp, engaged in at that time that she told you to forge her name to a check. Okay, so I'm an electrician and I've been an electrician for 13 years. I've been doing side work all around my county and there's a handful of liquor stores that trust me that I can go and cash personal checks that I get paid for doing my side work. Miss Rapp knew that and- Don't tell me what she knew. Okay, all right. 
So she would be locked out of her account for one reason or the other. And she would ask me like on a Friday, she wouldn't be able to get access her money. And I knew she had money. She well, would've... she couldn't get access to her money. So these weren't your checks you wrote out. You wrote out her checks. It'd right. be frozen out whether you went to take out money or she went to take out money. Right. Also on a Friday, the liquor store would not deposit these checks until Monday. So I cashed these checks for her to give her cash. Did you ever have sex with the plaintiff? No. Do you think she wanted to have a relationship with you? I think so. Okay. I don't know. What makes you think so? Well, the... The text message. The text message. The text said. message that she yeah. said to you. And who is Robert? Is her ex-boyfriend. And do you know Robert? I do. How do you know Robert? I've known Robert for 20 years. Been friends. And when did you start doing work for the plaintiff? Before or after Robert? Uh... Uh, is not an answer. It was uh, after. It was after. Yes. Okay. Give me an idea of when. You've cashed the first check in December of 2021. Give me some idea of when you were aware of the fact that the plaintiff and your dear friend of 20 years were no longer an item. Um, um is not an I answer. I don't know what, what month. month he was arrested. Uh, so Arrested for? June, maybe? Arrested for? I don't know his charges. I don't believe that. Okay. Leslie Rapp claims her former friend and handyman, Brandon Hall, forged her checks and filed a false restraining order against her. Brandon says he had Leslie's permission to write the checks. I'm just telling you, I don't believe that you don't know the charges of somebody who you were friendly with for 20 years and who was arrested. I don't believe that you don't know because it okay. belies credulity. Okay? That's fine. So before your dear friend of 20 years was arrested... Did you ever cash any checks for her? No. After Robert was arrested? Yes. Did you ever do any work for her before Robert was arrested? No. When did you and your wife separate? Uh, Month and year. Maybe February of 21. And were you still together with Robert in February of 2021? Yes. And when did you and the lovely Robert separate? Robert was removed from my life August 11th of 21. The defendant acknowledges in his answer that he forged your name, not only your name, your signature, but wrote out checks, actually wrote out in his own handwriting, checks in the amount of $8,800. Yes. And he acknowledges that, but he says they were because you asked him to or it was for work he did for you. Those were your answers, right? No, the, these checks were not for any jobs that I did for her. They were strictly to get access to her, some of her money during the weekends and stuff. And then when she was out of town as well. Get her access to her money and when she was out of town. When she was well, out she, of town? If you she, cashed her checks when she was out of town, how did she get money? I Venmoed the money to her. Okay, so that you have a record of that you Venmoed the money to her. Yes. On I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. Here you go. Here's all the Venmo deposits. Her sending me to money. Her. No, 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 not her. just a second. Try not to confuse me. I'm an old person. I want to see only the monies, because she's going to show me the checks that you forged. And contemporaneously, which is a close period of time, with those forged checks, you would have put the money in her Venmo account. On a couple of different okay. occasions. Okay, yeah. just a second. Just show me those cases. She's going to take out the checks that you forged. And those checks should coincide date-wise with the Venmo transactions. Am I doing that right? Yes. Venmo. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I don't see where I have the ones that I deposited in her account. These seem to all be her depositing into my account. Duh. Yeah. So. Okay. I do have so to. let us understand this, Miss Rapp. Did you ever give him permission? The answer is yes or no. 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 Did you file a police report? Yes, I did. You did. Yes. I'd like to see a copy of the police report. I have. Then, then we're in good shape. Mr. Hall, how many weekly payments did you make to her on Friday? I have a list of that from. From February. This is from Mrs. Rapp in... Uh, no, I'm no, asking you. Can't. I'm asking you, how many payments did you make for writing these unauthorized checks Seven. to her? Seven. Hmm? Seven. And what was the total amount of those checks? 3700 
Why in the world would you pay her $3,700? If you could look in those messages, I was being... <laughs> she was saying she was going to put me in jail for doing things. For forgery. Okay. For forgery. Right. And you asked her not to. Right. And you said, I'll pay you back. Right. Right. I'll pay you back. Just give me some time. I have two kids to support. Right. Is that what you said to her? Yes. $8,800 just for the plaintiff. We're done here. Is adjourned. Well, I'm happy about the outcome because... I think it's bogus, man. I really need the money. Because she started all this craziness when, as soon as I went back to my wife. There was never a relationship between the two of us. After that, when she started doing all this, is when I went and filed for a restraining order. He did that as a direct retaliation for the police report I filed. She's going to have to call somebody else for sure. It's definitely time for a new handyman. Just a casual note. Yeah. I have been with my husband, your grandfather, for almost 50 years. And we each have our bank account, and then we have a joint bank account. I have never either asked him or given him permission to sign my signature to a check. Yep. He hasn't never asked or given me permission to sign his, his signature on one of his checks. Mm -hmm. Now, we may ask each other, listen, it's busy. I'm going to go through these checks. We're making all these checks out to the doorman and to Christmas time and whatever, and then I'll sign them. Just doesn't happen. It so, doesn't make sense. Right. And so what it is, is to any job that you do, mm -hmm. whether it's a lawyer or a judge, you bring with you your own common sense and your own life's history. I hope that that works, because I cannot imagine yeah. somebody saying, write out a check for yourself. I don't know you. We're not involved. Yeah. We're not married. Mm -hmm. Go help yourself. Levi Shaw is suing his parents, Davery and Nathan Celestine, for the repair costs of an 18-wheeler truck. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. How are you? Case number 2032, Shaw versus Celestine. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Shaw, these are your parents, is that right? Yes, they are. How old are you? I'm 26. Just the very broad framework of this case. You're suing your parents for money that you put into a truck that belongs to them. Correct. And they are counterclaiming for money that they say you owe them for balance of a dog they purchased for you. Mm -hmm. The truck that you fixed belonged to your parents. Yes, the agreement was... It, no, it the truck that them, you yes. fixed belonged to your parents. And Correct. what I gather is that you would come into some money. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, it's not an answer. Oh, yes, ma'am. And when did you come into that money? I never came into any money from them after I fixed Not the from truck. them. I didn't say from them that you mm -hmm. came into some money. Uh-huh. Uh-huh is not an I'm, answer. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I came into some so money I want in October. You to, in October, mm -hmm. you were not employed. I was employed. By I, whom? Trucking. Is that their company? No. I was working with them and their brother. So you were working with the family? Yes. Okay. That was in October. Yes, October of 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's not an I answer. I mean, yes, yes ma'am. I'm answer. sorry. And how much did you come into? About $10,000 for the month of September and October. And then your father said to you, I assume, you should take some of that money and buy a 16-wheeler truck so that you... No, ma'am. Well, how did that happen, sir, that so, you got possession of your parents' truck. So it, Did you try to buy a truck on your own? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, in what month? Failed. Just a second. In what month did you try to buy a truck for yourself? January. January of 2022? This, yes, ma'am. And tried to buy a truck so that you could have your own truck for long hauling and business? Yes, ma'am. And you went to a dealer and you found the truck that you liked, but you didn't qualify for financing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how much is a new truck? That truck, it wasn't new. It was a 2015 and they priced it at $60,000. 60? Yes, ma'am. And you told your parents about that? Yes, ma'am. And ma there was a discussion that they had an older truck that wasn't running. It needed minor work. It that needed... Was told to me. Okay. So they said to you, it needs minor work. Was it running? It was running, but the diamond seal was cracked, so eventually the truck was just going to break down completely. Okay. So you took that truck with the understanding that you were going to repair the truck, and then what? To make money. 
But one, So you would repair the truck and then use it? Yes, ma'am. And you would keep most of the profits from using that truck? I mean, I'm trying to understand well, the, what the, the agreement, agreement was. was. My dad, Nathan, told me that the truck was only going to be worth $4,000 to fix, which was a diamond seal. It needs some bushings. It needs something for the exhaust pipe. Okay. And I was like, okay. But when the dude kept calling me for the truck and he was like, okay, this needs to be done. This but you to took the truck into a mechanic? Yes, ma'am. And did they give you an estimate? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before or after they did the work? They gave me one before, but I don't have that estimate, but I have the one for after. You mean after they completed the work, they sent you a bill? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's not an estimate. An estimate, sir, is when you go in and say, here is a truck. I want you to give me an estimate of what it is to have it fixed. Mm Mm-hmm. And they give you an estimate, and then you determine whether or not you want them to do any or all of that work, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would never bring a truck into any mechanic or to any dealership well, when mechanic was, and say, fix it. When they was calling me, telling me additional problems that was wrong, I would call them, which I have my phone records that show that I was also calling them once the dealership called me to fix the truck. Well, because just a second. Because some stuff on the truck wasn't able, like it needed a new gear, it needed new transmission was messed up on the truck. Just which a I second. All them. I want is what you're telling me that your father told you to go ahead and fix those things each time yes. you got a call? Yes. Okay, so you would call and your father would not say to you, well, how much is that to fix? Well, yeah, he was, but I had already had a settled amount that I told him that I was willing to spend, which was 10000 Well, did you spend 10000 The truck was actually over 10000 I understand to fix but it, I but did, you actually they did spent... Have 10, 000, you yes. actually spent the 10000 10900 to okay. be exact. to fix the truck? Yes, ma'am. And you have the truck? Yes, ma'am. And... I think the truck was 13000 to fix. Yes, ma'am. So you paid the additional $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Now the truck is running. Yes, ma'am, it's running. It was running before, young. But it's running now better because yes, there are... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because... Yes, ma'am. Because... Using it. Just a second. I can only hear from one of you. He said the truck is in use. You said no. It's not in use. Is the truck... No, young. I misunderstood what you said. I thought you was talking about the repair. You saying is the truck operable now? Yes, it's operable, but it's not on the road. It's not on the road? Who yes, cares ma'am. if it's ma'am. not on the road? Oh, yes, the ma'am. The idea was he was supposed to fix the truck and supposed to be able to use the truck. Yes, ma'am. Is he able to use the truck? Yes, he's able to use the truck. Okay, great. When was the last time he tried to use the truck? He never tried to use the truck after it was fixed. He said that he no longer wanted to be a part of the deal to give him his money back. Okay. I have something. Now, when the truck originally got fixed in February, my dad came into town multiple times. It was one more piece that needed to be fixed, which was the ABS module, which if you get pulled over, they're going to stop you and shut you down completely. I don't know. And I told him, hey, we need to get that fixed. He came into town three times, and I asked him, hey, are you going to take the truck to the shop? Hey, are you going to take the truck to the shop? He said no. And he's like, well, it don't have any insurance. And it was just a whole bunch of excuses why he couldn't take the truck to the shop. Whether he can or he can't, he says, and your mother says you're able to use the truck. But I don't have a CDL, so I'm not able to drive it. Well, you didn't have that when you took it in anyway, mm-hmm. to be fixed. But I didn't take the truck over there. He drove the truck to the mechanic shop. What if, I don't care who drove it there, but your agreement with him was you tried to buy a new truck. It was much too expensive. Your agreement with your parents was that you would take an older truck of theirs that needed a lot of work, and you took it into a mechanic, and the mechanic was going to fix the truck, make it operable, so that you would have an opportunity to use it and make money. Yes, ma'am. And so I'm asking you, now the truck is fixed to the tune of $13,000. When was the last time that you asked to use the truck that your parents said you can't? Well, I asked him, can I have his dad take the truck to get the additional piece put on? And he told me no, just to wait till he come into town. Okay. Jaw claims his parents, Davery and Nathan Celeste, owe for the repairs of an 18-wheeler truck. Levi's parents are counters to it for the balance of an English bulldog. Was the additional piece put on the truck that he's talking about? No, ma'am, it didn't actually Why? need that addition. It was an ABS uh, modulator, which on that particular model was a 1995 FLD Classic. On that particular model, you don't need that to reset the ABS light. All you need is a sensor that goes in the hub of the wheel. What I'm asking you is, your son said that you needed this one part. This is your business. Yes, ma'am. How much is that one part? This is a part that I never researched, so I can't tell you that, but according okay. to him... Some Perhaps, 
I didn't ask you anything. Perhaps you can tell me. The part was nine hundred dollars. That was returned back. It was never returned because they wouldn't let me return it because it's dealing with wires. So when I asked them, can I return it? They said no. And I had a text where I text her and I said, hey, they will not let me return this piece. Return what piece? It, the ABS module. So, they will not let me return it because it's electrical and they do not accept returns on electric pieces. So is what you're telling me that you bought this piece for nine hundred dollars? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that. It wasn't necessary. You didn't buy it from him. No, but I don't know if it was necessary, but what the mechanic told me and what You can't the tell me what the mechanic told you. Well, I'm just saying the mechanic No, you can't tell me what the mechanic told you. Well, all I'm telling you, Mr. Shaw, is you had an agreement with your parents to fix a truck mm -hmm. and then to be able to use it. And I want to know whether they have ever denied you the right, because that was the contract that you made. You never made a contract with them that you would take a truck to the mechanic and they would pay for the repairs. Mm -hmm. You never made that contract with them. You want me to say that that was your contract with them. They say the truck is operable now and that you can use it. When do you want to use it? Well, if they're willing to let me use it, then I want to use it as soon as possible. Okay, and you can drive the truck. No, I was going to hire a driver. Okay, and the truck now is not on the road, is that correct? That's correct. That's yeah, correct. Yes, ma'am, that's, right. that's right. That's right. The yeah. truck is that's not right. on the road. No, ma'am, it's is not. Is what you said, yes. but operable. Yes, it's not operable. Okay, and after the agreement that your son was going to pay the money, fix the truck, and then be able to work at it so that he's getting some benefit from what he put into the truck. Yes, ma'am. Did you have an agreement? I wanted to ask. I'm not him. looking at you. Okay. Did you have a discussion with him about how much of the time he would be able to utilize the truck? Or was your agreement with him that he could use it at will? I gave him a specific time. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to hear what the specific uh, time was. specific were. time was. Don't let's make it up as we go. No, no, ma'am. I'm, I'm thinking straight to you. I'm going to tell you just like it out to you. I gave him a specifically, according to him, about three months of when he probably needed it, you know, to get himself together. No, just a second. You mean he was going to spend $10,000 on fixing the truck and you were going to let him use it for three months? Well, put your hand down. He, I'm well, not uh, talking to well, you. Well, as long as he needed it. I'm going to put it that way. As long as he needed the truck. Okay. So now that's better. Yes, ma'am. So that he can use the truck whenever he needs it and he's going to get a driver. I just want to know because we're going to have to memorialize all this yes, in an order. What do you want? We had a driver. My brother was the driver. I don't care whether your brother was the driver or not. That was not the agreement that your husband said he made with his son. Yes, ma'am. He says he made an agreement with him that if he paid to have it fixed, he could use the truck whenever he wanted to. That's what your father says. No, that is not correct. Okay, that is not so true. when did you ask to use the truck? So in January, when I was getting the truck fixed, they told me 4000 But as the mechanic kept calling me, adding on stuff, I said, hey, I'm not about to pay all this money, and y'all telling me I can just use it. If I'm about to put all my money into it, I want the truck. And my mom was like, okay, you can do that. Because in January, they didn't what? make any money just a second so what you're telling me is what you said to your mother i'm not going to put in all this money unless the truck belongs to me correct well th that's not unreasonable mr shaw i can actually see that you're spending ten thousand dollars of your money and you want to be able to use the truck mm -hmm. and you want it to be able to not have it on a whim of somebody else yes ma'am how old is this truck this truck is exactly 20 Two years old. How long have you owned it? I've owned it since I was 23 years old. Okay. So you've owned it since it was new? Yes, ma'am. Did you make a living from it? Yes, ma'am, I did. Good. Do you have any other trucks now? Yes, ma'am, I do. How many others? Just one other. I, I'm not no big scale company. I just got a, one other truck. Yes, ma'am. Can I see the title to the truck, please? To the truck we're talking about? Yes. I don't have that title with me. Why not? I was... <laughs> Under the impression that I didn't need to bring it. Okay. And according to you, the truck's not on the road now? No, ma'am, it's not on the road. Do you remember having a conversation with your son about, I'm not going to spend all this money unless the truck is mine? Yes, ma'am, I do remember okay. that conversation. Do you remember where it took place? He was driving and I was at home. So it was over the phone? Yes, ma'am. Remember what month that was? January. January of 2022. Correct. Tell me what you said to him and what he said to you. I told him, I totally understand what you're saying. I said, let me talk to your daddy and we'll see what we could do. But Great. As a parent, that sounds perfectly reasonable. And did you speak to your husband? Yes, I did. Do the two of you own the truck? He owns the truck. It's in his name and Nathan's name. So you said, okay, that sounds okay. Let me talk to your daddy. You have to talk to the owner of the truck because Correct. now you're seeking to change the agreement. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. And after you spoke to your mother, did you have a conversation with your father about the ownership of the truck? Yes, we did. And tell me when that was and what was discussed. It was in January as well. And when I told him that, he said he totally agreed with me that if I put in majority of the money, that I can have the truck. Okay. I want to tell you certain things sort of ring true to me if... I were a young person and spending all my money for a business because this is the business that he was going to be in. He was going to hire a driver. He was going to take a certain amount of the profits. I could understand him saying to his parents, who now have a truck that they're not using because it's not on the road, I'm going to spend all my savings, it looks like, because the initial estimate was $4,000, but it kept going up and up and up and up and up. So if I'm going to spend all this, put your hand down. If I'm going to spend all this money, I'd like to own the truck. And in response to that, his mother said and acknowledges that she said, it sounds right to me. I'm going to speak to your father. And according to you, you spoke to your father and your father said, sounds okay. Yes, ma'am. So you went ahead and spent the money. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Levi Shaw says his parents, Davery and Nathan Celeste, owe for the cost of repairs to an 18-wheeler truck. Levi's parents say he never used the truck and it is still not fixed. I'd like to see the bills for the truck. Oh, I have it on my phone. Well, what is that? These was the bank statements because at first they was countersuing for insurance as well. So I was showing bank statements where I had sent them money. So no, that's what these was yeah. for. But I have it on my phone, but I don't have it in the statements. Well, I need it. Here you go. Is that the one final invoice? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. And it also I have at the bottom where it says it needs the ABS module. Your Honor, can I see that as well? Yes. So the entire amount is $13,000. $13,000 and some change. And your father paid three? Yes, ma'am. This is not the correct invoice. What? I have the, the, original. the original invoice. Oh, fine, I'll take a look this at yours. This the invoice that was sent to me via, so by their email, which I can pull up their email as well. And it shows that it's paid on the back. Just a second. Yes, ma'am. It's the same thing as he showed me. But it has our name on it. Who cares? The ones that he showed you, it changed since then. Well, but let me ask you a question. No. Unless I'm missing something. No, 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 no. You're not questioning the fact that he paid $10,000 to fix the truck <clears> out of the $13,000 that the truck was. Are you questioning that? No, I'm not okay, questioning that. Okay, then I don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Let's go over this one more time. When your son said to you, you know, if I'm going to spend all this money, I want to own the truck. And your wife had the same conversation with you, right? She said, I got a call from Levi. Levi said if he's going to spend all this money, he really wants the truck. And she actually thought it was okay. And what did you say, sir? I said that I'm not going to sell you the truck. Why? I will let you use the truck. No, no. When did you say that? Because I have other children. Oh, no, but your other children didn't put any money into the no, truck. No, no, I know. I know no, just a second. Your other children didn't put I any money into saying, the truck. I know like... Hand down. He didn't okay. ask me to buy the truck. Okay. Brother. He asked, could he use it? Just a second. He was going to sell it to my uncle because when the repairs got done, they actually didn't have enough money because I had 8000 saved up. They took 4000 of my 8000 That you got to paid pay back. The, yes, but they didn't have the money, so That's when true. they... You, That's you just Mr. Shaw, Mr. Shaw... I don't expect you to talk to each other. I don't expect you to talk yes, to him. Yes, ma'am, I understand. It's very easy. I believe that you changed the contract with your son from a contract where he would pay for the repairs, which was supposed to be $4,000, and then you have the use of the truck to the fact that he was going to spend $10,000, which was all of his money. Put your hand down. I'm not... This 22-year-old truck that you've had since it was new was going to be his. And I am going to craft an order to the Department of Motor Vehicles to reissue a title in the truck to him. Do you understand? He's going to take that order. He's going to get a new registration for the car and a new ownership. Unless you want, put your hand down. This is, this Your is Honor, not I don't a, understand this is not, it's not, I don't understand that. Well, I got I other children. Second, I got five me, other do kids. Do you want me, man. do you want me to and say it's spoiled, slower? Your Honor. And I say, what about the 3500 that we put into it? You're absolutely right. Okay. But it wasn't 4500 it was 3500 35 I'm sorry if you didn't hear me well. Man. You are absolutely entitled to that. 
do. I believe you are Ooh. entitled to that. He put in Ooh. 10. That's his truck. I, I, I mean, Yana, I worked all my life with that truck. I don't care. I worked all my... Uh, I, I don't care. care. He's not going to spend Yana. this $10,000 on to I care. I done fix, made over a million dollars with truck? truck. That's ridiculous. I want you to stop it. Say, man. Hey, man. Okay. Can, how can you tell me now, to stop on something going... I work blood, sweat, and tears on? He finna take. I need a break. That's the judgment. I'm not entertaining your counterclaim. That's the judgment of the court. You get title to the truck. You can retrieve it as soon as you change the registration of the truck. However, in order to do that, you have to give your parents the $3,500 that they put into the truck. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, what about we're this done. dog? We're yeah, done. We this court is adjourned. We're done. 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 We're disrespectful and didn't listen to me. Oh, yes, you did. That's it. We're done. All right. My actions of my response to what she was saying is wasn't nothing being disrespectful towards her. I'm very glad she ruled in my favor. It was the initial, you know, the, the thought of giving up my hard-earned possessions. It was because I did try to work it out before we came to court, and they was like, no, we're not going to pay you nothing. I what? never would have thought in a million years to sue my parents, even though they, you know, my parents with my butt. But that was just something you had to go through back then. It says me, I'm in disbelief that my parents did that to me. I didn't think that they would do that. Because, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know his plans. I can't, can't talk that. If you do business with family, make sure you get contracts. You know, I sympathize with the plaintiff's position on this because modifications of contracts are supposed to be allowed when there's a change in circumstance. So it's not like he was attempting to change the contract every Friday or for no reason. He thought that it was going to be $4,000. It turned out to be 10000 to fix the truck. And as such, he wanted the bargain for exchange. That's a lot more money than he initially intended. So that conversation makes sense to me, that that, that conversation between his parents, that I know we had agreed to this, but now with this new information, this is what I'm comfortable with. Is that okay? I think so. I and think that is a common sense exactly. interpretation of for, what happened. For a truck that cost 60000 20 years ago, to put in $10,000 to it is not nothing. That's a, that's a big investment. Well, it probably isn't worth more than that. And the condition that it was in before he had it repaired, mm -hmm. their position was unreasonable mm -hmm. because now they have a fixed truck that their child paid that for. That their child paid for. And with the animus between them, it doesn't seem to me as if he's going to get any benefit no. from the bargain. So the modification of their original oral contract, which I think happens mm -hmm. occasionally when circumstances change, as long as both parties agree. And I actually think that both the mother and the father said okay, and then something happened that I don't know about. Yeah. Don't want to know about it. And I don't want to know <laughs> about it. But I think it's fair that he had possession of the yeah. truck since he paid them. And Robert Burroughs are suing their former friends, Marina and David Quadra, for illegal eviction and property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everybody. Hello, Judge. Case 2072, Burroughs versus Quadra. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Quadra, you were living in a home, in a house? Correct, a town yeah. home. That you didn't own. And for how long... Had you been renting that home? We did not rent out the, the home. How long, if you didn't own it, then you were renting it? We rented it for two years, Your Honor. It gets scarier if you have a fixed position in your head so that you're not listening to my questions. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. When did your lease start? July of 2020. And when was it to terminate? It was terminated August 1st, 2022. And it was terminated by an eviction? Correct. And you were evicted because the landlord said that you sublet the apartment to these people and their family. Correct. And they were people who you knew, both in the military? Just no, him. What do you do? I'm a federal employee. And you? I'm active duty, ma'am. But you knew each other from work? Correct. Where did you move in August? National City, Your Honor. How far is that from your prior residence? Uh, it's about 30 miles south, Your Honor. Are you in a home that you own or that you rent? We are still renting. How much are you paying in rent? Twenty-one fifty a month. You have a signed lease? We do. When did that lease start? August 1st, 2022. And why did you choose to live in National City? It is closer to where he is stationed. It is also the... Shh. Don't speak. Yes, Your Honor. How much closer? Um, to his job. To his job. It went from a 30-minute drive to a 15-minute drive. Okay. So that's better. Correct. You were evicted. You were served a notice of eviction on what date? They let us know a month before August. They gave us a 30-day notice. Now, 
Did the plaintiffs have any furniture in the home that you were evicted from? Prior to us being evicted, yes. Yes, prior to your being evicted. And what furniture did they have? Two dressers and a bunk bed. Anything else? That's as far as furniture. And what furniture did you have in there prior to being evicted? A full living room. And when um, did you move that out? On what date? The 30th of July, two days before our moving date. So you moved out all of your furniture? Correct. And how much were you paying in rent in the place from which you were evicted? Twenty-five ninety-five. Oh, I didn't write that down. How much were you paying in the new place? The place we are in now? Twenty-one fifty. So you're paying less rent? Correct. It's substantially smaller. And substantially closer to his place of employment? Correct. Good. Now, do you want to tell me your version of how they came to be living in your house? We received a call one night. It was very late, 10 p.m. Robert was very upset, crying. He had nowhere to go. He? Correct. Robert had nowhere to go, and Kelly was asking for a divorce. He asked if he could crash on the couch. We have a toddler at home, so I asked him to sleep in our guest bedroom instead of the couch. Okay. He stayed that first original night, and the next day he needed to job hunt as he was jobless. We offered to watch his child. He looked for the job and he came home. He asked us if he could stay for a while in that guest bedroom until he got onto his feet with the job. He offered money to just help out with utilities. and How much? $1,000. 1000 a month? No, just 1000 And our words, when he had asked, and we asked him, how long do you think it will take you to get on your feet? It was just a couple weeks. Okay, so he was offering $1,000, correct, which was 40% of your rent, to stay for two weeks to stay in your guest bedroom. Mm-hmm. Pretty decent. Did he give you the $1,000? He did. And he gave you the $1,000 on what date? He gave us the $1,000 on May 29th. And when did he start staying there? He started staying with us May 21st. Then what happened? He stayed with us for about a week. Everything was okay. He job hunted. I helped with the child. Within this week, he... Look at me. I'm sorry. He confided in us that he wanted to work on his marriage with Kelly. He did not want the divorce. It was something that she had asked for. They wanted to work on it together and had asked if Kelly could come around to stay with him and the children and work on their marriage. When he moved into the guest room, did he take the children? Did he he have the children with him? He did, but it was just on certain nights they were sharing. And then he asked if... Kelly could come as well. Correct. The wife. And what did you say? Well, we, why couldn't he go home? He could not go home due to their relationship with her parents. Their parents. Oh, she was, she living, was living with her parents. Correct. And they were parents, both living with her parents. Correct. So he said, I can't go home. We want to work on the marriage. Could we come and stay here with you? Correct. They have two kids? They have three. They have three kids. And how many dogs? Four. Four dogs. So far, you get four stars if you let her come. <laughs> I wish it would have worked that way. No. You don't understand that that's where I'm at so far. Yeah, of course. So now, May 29th, he gives you the $1,000. She moves in when with the dogs? So we had a long trip planned to Vegas. We let them know that after we had left, she could come stay while we were gone. What month? June? June, correct. How long were you away? We were away for five to six days. Well, what was he going to do when she came there with the four dogs, three kids after six days? What was the plan? This was never a, a plan of here's a lease agreement you are going to rent from us. It was just a, I need question. somewhere to stay. Can they please come for this short period of time until we figure this out? Great. OK, now let me hear your version of the events. When you went to stay there with your children, you were having trouble with your wife. That's incorrect. Incorrect. Former friends, Marina and David Quadra, owe for an illegal eviction. Marina and David are countersuing, saying Kelly and Robert caused them to be evicted. So when you went to their house and you wanted to work on your marriage, you could have gone back to your in-laws. Yes, that's correct. You could have. Why didn't you? Uh, The reason why we decided to split up was because we're trying to keep our kids in the same school district. So with having four dogs, that's impossible to keep in an HOA. So she decided to go with her parents. I decided to stay back to finish the school year with the kids, still being in May they can finish in the same school district. That's why I decided I needed a mailing address so that they could stay in the same school district. So you mean this discussion that she just said to me about you having problems, marital problems Irrelevant. with your wife, that never happened? Irrelevant. It's just- it's no, That's not what I said. What I said was, because I believe her. I believe that that's what happened. I believe that you called her and said exactly what she said. She told me. I mean, I don't have to have Whitney read it back. I believe that that's what you said. So I don't want to hear baloney about school districts. You were having trouble with your wife. No, ma'am. No. No. 
And you didn't tell her that. We had been moved out of our old place of six years in El Cajon, and we were trying for six months to find a new place. So yes, it does put a lot of stress on a relationship, but we did not have any Mis marital... Mr. Burroughs, you know what my strong suit is, and there's no question that the cameras just caught your face. My strong suit is being able to spot a lie from a mile away. And I'm telling you that there's no question that you called her late at night and said, I'm having trouble with my wife. She asked me for a divorce. Can I come and stay with you? There's no question that whether it was true or not, I don't know, because clearly you're a liar. So maybe it wasn't true, but that's what you told her. Your Honor, may I speak? You want me to call your parents? Please do. Would you like me to call your parents? I'm just asking you, would you like me to call your parents? No. Of course not. That's an easy thing for me to do. Part of what was going on was that we lived in our home for six years and the homeowners had moved back in and so they asked us to leave and we had been actively searching for a home. So yes, it did put a bit of a strain on our marriage and I took my dogs with me so that I can keep my operating business at my parents' house because I am a dog boarder, dog sitter. And I did not want to shut my business down. And during this time, tensions, little things happening at my parents' house. So I said, you need to go see if you can rent a room or find somebody that can help you in the meantime till we can actively keep searching for a place for our family. We tried five different homes and we didn't. I don't care. Them. What I said to your husband was he lied to me because there's no question that he called and whether it was true or not that he said to your friends, I need a place to go. Do you have a place that I could stay on the couch? There's no question he said that to her. That is true. Yes, that is true. Okay. To, well, to then I want you to introduce your husband to the truth. Is it true? It's something that he hasn't met because that's not what he told me what happened. Correct. So that was a mistake of his. A mistake. It, that was a mistake. And you know what happens when you lie to me once? Your case is dismissed. Because what you're suing for is being evicted and you go, blah, 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 blah emotional distress. You lie to me once, your case is dismissed. Now, we're gonna come over here. You have a counterclaim. Your counterclaim is money owed for property damage Correct. and for damages for eviction. Because what happened was your landlord evicted you because she comes with her four dogs, three gerbils, two parakeets to your house and the owner of your condo doesn't want her any more than the owner of their last condo. Of course. Didn't want them. Got to save your money, buy your own house so you can have as many dogs and parakeets as you like. You moved into a place that's nicer? Absolutely not. Tell me what the papers said when your landlord notified you of the eviction. Do you have them? We do. I'd like to take a look at yes, them. Yes, no problem. There was also in that piece of paper a $250 fine through our HOA from the whole commotion that he caused the day of asking them to leave. Just a second, you were a month-to-month -month tenant? Correct. You didn't have a lease for two years. You were a month-to-month -month tenant. We had a year lease, and then when the year was up, we moved month-to-month. -month. They didn't evict you. No, they just gave us, they asked Just a second, your lawsuit is for damages, putative damages for an eviction. You weren't evicted. Well, we were asked to leave if we... No, they just decided the not to renew your month-to-month -month lease. Due to the... Lawsuit. I don't care what it was due to. Listen, if I owned a property and you let three kids, four dogs, moved into my condo for six days, I wouldn't renew your lease on a month-to-month -month basis either. I don't care whether they were there for two days, four days, a week, or a month. You understand? Understood. Okay, so there was no eviction. So the punitive damages for that, I forget it. Money owed for property damage. When they moved out, what did they damage? And how much did it cost you? There was a hole in the molding from moving the dressers down our stairs. They bonked it, bringing it out angrily because they were mad that we asked them to leave. We have the letters from our landlord stating everything they had to deduct from our deposit. Just a second, a hole in the wall. And how much? was the hole in the wall. The molding was... No, just to look at the paper and tell me how much was the hole in the wall. The painting was 180 and the molding repair was 200. How? Did you damage the molding when you were moving a dresser out of the house? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, not that you're aware of. You want to try the truth now? Was there a hole that you created moving a dresser out of the house? When David and I were moving our dresser over the stairs, down the stairs... Who's David? The defendant. So you were moving out the dresser with him? Careful, introducing you to the truth. Did you move the dresser with him? 
I uh, did help move the furniture. The case is dismissed. The counterclaim counter yes. likewise is dismissed. We're done. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I take it as a win. The initial suit was them against us. Their suit got dismissed. We lost a lot of things and a lot of wages. That was just us being good friends. We definitely learned our lesson. We will never help another crying husband on our doorstep claiming divorce again. People that are offering to be nice to you in, in times of need don't charge you. They kind of cried oh, marriage and divorce the whole time knowing that we're young and married. It's something we take seriously in our lives. And we're still trying to build our lives back. I should actually make a party to introduce all those people <laughs> to Mr. Truth. I agree. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of mismatch. It doesn't make sense. If yeah. you're going to stay with a friend for a few days, you don't bring a bunk bed and two dressers. No. I've stayed with friends for a couple days, long weekend. You bring a bag with some right. clothes. Even you with your kids. Yeah, you don't bring furniture. You don't bring any of that. So there's yeah. a lot of discrepancies. Things that didn't make sense. If it doesn't make sense. Giovanni Costello is suing his former friend, Jacob Knapp for dental and medical bills. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2110, Costello versus Knapp. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Costello, you and Mr. Knapp were out drinking in the park. Yes. Date and time. The date and time was around 3 a.m. and it was on 9-11 of 2021. And you've known Mr. Knapp for how long? Roughly nine years. We started off playing high school baseball. And when had you first met up on September 11th? I can't remember the exact time. I would say around maybe 7 p.m. Where? At a bar over in Old Town Pasadena. We weren't meeting up. Just a second. Yeah. So you were in a bar in Pasadena, 7 p.m., just the two of you or the more people? No. How many were there in the whole group? I had around five or six people in my group, and we went All to All friends? Bar. Yeah. And you? He wasn't a part of that group. Uh, but you were at the bar. No, ma'am. I was at work when he contacted me. Okay. So, um, so you were at the bar starting at 7 with your friends. He wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. What time did he join you? It wasn't, I couldn't tell you the exact time. Approximately. About an hour later. At the bar. Yeah. But it wasn't a text or anything like that. He just happened to go to the same bar. No, ma'am. Uh, what ended up happening from the start, I was at work. He contacted me via text. I don't Do you have, have any... that text? No, ma'am. I tried to erase the whole memory from my mind, so I deleted all the pictures and all the text messages. Oh, well, that's that unfortunate. Meant. Yes. That's unfortunate. I've never done that, by the way. You know, deleted, wanted to erase something from my mind, so I didn't just say I'm not going to think about it anymore. I've never done that. Did you ever do that, Sarah? I have not. You have not? And she's pretty efficient with text messages. Did you ever do that? Never with... have I done that. No. Well, you must be unusual, sir. Okay, so you met at the bar. What time did you get there? Uh, well, my shift ended at around 9 o'clock. What time did you get to the bar? 10 o'clock. And when you got to the bar, you met Mr. Costello. Yes, ma'am. He had a few friends with him. How long did you stay at the bar? Uh, we were there until 12. Okay, so Mr. Costello, you had been drinking from 7 until about 12. Correct. The answer is yes. Yes, of course. And what's your drink of choice, sir? Uh, beer. What else? Uh, the, the first bar that we were at doesn't, doesn't serve hard alcohol, so it was just beer there. Okay, so yeah. from 7 to when were you at the first bar? Yeah. From 7 to when? 7 to when? Till to 12. 12. Yeah. So it's but 7 to 12. At the same, same time as well. Okay, so from 7 to 12, you were drinking beer. Yeah. And then where did you go at 12 o'clock? After 12 o'clock, we ended up going to another bar in Arcadia. Okay, and you stayed there from when to when? Uh, from 12 to closing, which is 2 a.m. And you were part of that group? Yes, that's when I initially met the group. At the second bar? Or at the, the first? second bar, yes. Not at the first bar? No, ma'am. Okay. So you got to the second bar. You were there about, you said you were there at 10 o'clock. Yes. So they weren't there when you arrived? They were there when I arrived, yes. Well, he said that, I thought he said he got to the second bar at 12 o'clock. I arrived at the bar at around 10 o'clock, ma'am. And you got there at 12 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. So by the time you all got together and left the bar, you had all been drinking, you for a very long time, and you for a shorter time. Yes, ma'am. So from 10 to 2, so four hours. And what's your drink of choice? 10 to 12, Your Honor. I apologize. 10 to 12. Where did you go for, at 12 o'clock? Uh, 12 o'clock is when uh, we had all decided to go to a park, um, kind of a low-key area. No, he said that he went to a bar between 7 and 12. 
Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Whitney? Did he say? He mm -hmm. said you were at the bar, first bar, between 7 and 12, drinking beer. That's what you said. Correct. You said the first bar only served beer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh huh. Is not an answer. Yes, yes, yes is an yes. answer. You say at 12 o'clock, you went to a second bar where you had alcohol between 12 and 2. Yes. Correct. Yes? Correct. You got to a bar at 10 o'clock. Yes. Which one? The beer bar or the alcohol bar? I finished my shift, like I said, at 9, and... I showed up at the bar at 10 to meet up with them to try to rekindle an old friendship. Okay. Yeah. I actually don't care about that. All right. So partially, you got your story straight. Partially not. Anyway, you were two drunks. Now it's after 2 o'clock. And you decide to go to a park. How many people went to a park? And what park? It was the same amount of people that I was with from the start. And you were along at the park? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was. Okay. Did you take any beers to the park or you went without them? You took yes. beers to the park. The answer uh, is yes. Yeah. The main reasoning of going to the park was after the bar had closed, Jacob mentioned to the, the group that he had beers with him. So that incited us to go to the park and have some he beers. He continued drinking. Them. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It, prior, prior to me showing up, I did stop by 7-Eleven. Okay. So you had beers with you and you were at the bar. Yes. Nice. Very good. Now you get to the park, you're drinking beers. Now you're going to describe what you say is the assault that you suffered at the hands of Mr. Knapp. Now, I want you to know my feeling before you tell me the story. Okay. I usually don't get myself overly exercised about what drunks do in a mm -hmm. park. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I know that you may be all exercised about it, although I'm not exactly sure you're all exercised about it. So if you really are, I'm going to listen to you. If you're not, yeah. we just eliminate this case. Do you understand? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. <laughs> Diplo claims his former friend, Jacob Knapp, owes for dental bills after being hit in the mouth with a beer can. Okay, go. You're in the park, drunk. Starting He's the in the park, park yeah. drunk. Yes. And? To state I was not drunk because I was driving my witness here. I want to tell you morning. something. If you were drinking right. from 7 to 2, you were drunk. I hadn't been drinking the whole time that I was Let's there. Let's go. Let's okay. go. So going into it, I was sitting at a park bench with Maureen here. And then I had another two friends that were on the other side and we're hanging out. They had the, the two across from me got up. They went further into the park and I was sitting with just her alone. And I was just about to show her a video off my phone. Next thing I know, I get hit in the face by a beer. After that occurs, I reach to my mouth to see something's wrong there. And I feel that like a, a part of my tooth is missing. Okay, and that's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's the assault mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Yeah. And you allege that Mr. Knapp was the one who threw the beer bottle. Yes. Okay. It was a full beer can. A can? Yeah, my bottle. Did I have you to report I'm this sorry. incident to the police? I did not take it to the police oh, because... Just a second, I'm just asking you. Oh, sorry. The answer is no. No, I disagree. With disagree his, that he with, went to the police? With his story. Okay, I'll, I'll get there. Okay, so now you get hit in the face with a beer can, step by step. You look down, you look at your tooth. Realize it's chipped. I say out loud, I, my tooth is chipped. She doesn't... Don't tell me not first. about she. Just uh, you. Just me. I just, I noticed it was chipped. And then after I announced that it was chipped, several of my friends, I guess, went towards him. And well, I don't you know didn't tell me anything about him. You didn't tell me. You just said you got hit in the face with a beer can. Yeah. That's all you said to and me. And he was the only other person I was standing right there besides her sitting just next to me. So you didn't see him throw the beer can at you? There was no one else there. I'm just... Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't see him throw it at me, but I never... There was never a case of... No, you didn't... Of anything that's else. all. Yeah. You didn't see him throw it at you? No. Okay, go. Uh, from the park, Your Honor? Take it from all the right. park. So... Now I got two drunks in the park, maybe three. <laughs> there was actually more than just three of us surrounding the table. Um, just a second. Me and him... Go slowly. Okay, sorry. Slower. I don't know the table. I have no idea what you're talking about. So, as he was saying, we were sitting at a park bench. I had brought the beer. The beer was next to me. He had asked me to toss him a beer. And that's plainly okay. what I did was I underhanded him lightly a beer to him. And in his defense, he's saying he wasn't drunk, but he, it definitely was apparent that he was. When you anybody who's been drinking beer, from 7 to 2 in the morning is drunk. Yes, ma'am. So I lightly tossed him a beer, and unfortunately, it was dark enough to where he had missed, and the beer had hit him in the face, in which after, immediately, I started to apologize to him, stating that I didn't mean to, but it was apparent he was looking at me and did not catch the beer. So personally, I think everything he said to you okay. right now was... Okay, that's, that's your story. You tossed him a beer. 
Yes. Because he asked you, he said, toss me a beer. Yes, Your Honor. And it was dark. Yes. And you were drunk. And he was drunk. I wasn't drunk, Your Honor. I had four beers nah. within the time of nah. 10 o'clock till not, when this incident yeah. happened. You know, I'm not real comfortable with that, sir. Okay. Because according to you, you had been drinking for four hours. And not only were you drinking for four hours, but you brought extra alcohol to have in the park. By the way. Which was a by the way, container. Where do you live? In, what in Pasadena, Your Honor. In California. Are you allowed to drink alcohol in parks in California? I'm not certain. Well, let's find out. Open beer cans in city parks in California. That's a no. So after... Chad, we're not oh, talking yet. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Drinking alcoholic beverages is a prohibited activity in parks and park areas, according to the Pasadena City Park rules. Thank you. This park that you went to, what's the name of it? I'm not sure. It was up the street from the last bar we were at. Okay. Now, did you, Mr. Costello, and the defendant... Immediately after this event, did you communicate with him via text or email? I texted him, I think it was roughly a couple of days later. Okay, I'd like to see the mm -hmm. text. I have that. That's all no, I want to see. Don't, could... don't say anything else. Okay. Just show me the texts that you sent him a couple of days later. There it is. Okay, thanks, Kevin. I'd like to see these texts from your phone, and I'd like to see all your text messages starting September 14th. That's right here. Of 2021. Mm -hmm. No, sir, you have to understand. What you said to me here, mm -hmm. what you gave me, is two texts a year apart. Mm -hmm. I want to see the texts to him there was nothing. After September 14th, you mean he didn't respond at all the to next, this? I don't believe that. My next I thing don't, that I did was I sent a letter through the mail, and I have that here, and I have proof of it where I had it, so where he had to sign for it, and I have the receipt for it as well. What date? That one, I can pull it up right here. I'm sorry, what letter? I never received a letter. Just a sec. So what you're telling me is that I'm supposed to believe that after you sent this email on September 14th, which is three days after the event, Mm -hmm. He never responded to you, and you never sent a follow-up email that or text. Was the, that was the letter. And in the letter I gave him... I... Shh, just a sec. Okay. Oh, here. Take this back. It's nonsense. I don't want to see something prepared for litigation, sir. You said you had a document that you sent to him that he had to sign for. If you sent him a letter, return receipt requested, then you have a return receipt requested with a signature on it. That's a document that you prepared two days ago. I have the receipt in here. Let's get it. Okay. I never signed such document. Just, just don't shout out again. Yes, ma'am. It's annoying, and I'm annoyed enough with this case. I'm sorry for being so unorganized. I... Me too. Yeah. I'm sorry you're so unorganized too, or disorganized. Oh, here it is. Great. Certified mail. stuck to the back one. This was sent April of 2022. Mm -hmm. I want to see what the response was. There had to be a response. I never got a since response Since September from him. 14th, 2021. There had to be a response. I never got a response from him. Kevin, show this to Mr. Knapp and tell me if he recalls this text message. <clears throat> Uh, Your Honor, no, I do not remember getting this text. <laughs> Why would you respond a year later? I know from the past, dealing with Mr. Knapp here, he tends to always, being friends whenever, get into an this altercation or argument, he unfollows me, blocks me on everything. Okay. So the po there is a possibility by that text message I, I, not going I, through. I don't deal in possibilities, sir. I sent the text message, and I have proof of there. It was delivered, and I never got a response from him. I'm just asking, yeah. sir. This incident happened September 11th. You mm -hmm. have to understand, I think that if that's what happened, happened, mm -hmm. I tend to believe that the defendant did not just willy-nilly take a can and fling it at your face. I want you to know that I don't believe that. Giovanni Castillo has accused his former friend, Jacob Knapp, of hitting him with a beer can. Jacob says Giovanni asked him to throw it. Okay, it is more likely 
more likely than not that you were sitting with this lady who, according to you, you were supposed to drive home. Mm -hmm. That's what you said five minutes ago. So you were supposed to drive home, which means she was trashed because that's what you said. You no, said, I wasn't... This was the arrangements from the very beginning of the night. Okay. Do you understand? So we had a whole bunch of trashed people. And I am more likely to believe the defendant when he says, you said to him, toss me a beer, and it accidentally hit you in the face. My, my questioning is, is that the... I don't answer questions. Okay, well, where the beer was placed on the table, I don't understand why I would have to ask him to toss me a beer when I can simply reach over and grab one myself. I don't know either. But no it is, sounds... More likely to me than not that it was his beer, he brought it there, and you said to him, toss me a beer. You failed to catch it. That's now, correct. that doesn't mean that the defendant isn't at least partially responsible for the stupidity of that night. But you have some responsibility, too, because I really don't believe that he left the bar. He was angry and frustrated over something that you had no idea Mm -hmm. But he was angry and frustrated over because you were all sitting together. And he just, out of the blue, took a beer and threw it at your face. I don't believe that. What Do I, you understand? If I could show you a picture here, you could see, you could see that um, if he just simply tossed me a beer, I don't understand how a beer can could chip my tooth the way that it Just did. a second. Mm -hmm. It can. It okay. can. Okay. I can eat a biscotti and it can chip my tooth. Biscotti, that's a cookie. A very hard cookie. And have, mm -hmm. and have. I mean, I could chip my tooth on my grandmother's steak. It was so hard, but certainly from, but certainly from a beer can. So I don't believe that you're blameless. What was your dental bill, sir? All the statements here. While he's looking for that, you understand that if you were sitting there, and instead of a bunch of beer cans, and the plaintiff said to you, you know. That gun that's in your pocket, toss it over to me. I want to take a look at it. And you did. You took the gun out of your pocket and you tossed it over to him. And as you were tossing it over, it accidentally fired. Would it be his fault if he got shot? No. No. Whose fault would it be? Uh, mine. Right. Because you, you weren't supposed to do that. Right. Because it was potentially dangerous. Of course. Well, same thing with a knife or an explosive device. Right. Or something very hot. Like, toss me a cup of coffee in a container and splatter. So you don't do what anybody asks you to do if it's not a smart thing to do. Right. Unless you're drunk. <laughs> unless you're drunk. Your Honor, then, if I may. Um, yeah. Coming from a baseball background, as such as me and Gio did. I, I don't care about your expect, baseball background. No. There's no question, sir, that you acknowledge you threw it at him. And I'm telling you right. that if your excuse is that he asked me to do it, so I followed the fool's directions. I'm telling you, he's going to pay part of his dental bill because I think it was partially his responsibility. But if you acknowledge that you were stupid enough to throw the beer can in his direction, you have to be partially liable. You're two drunks, that's what happens. So don't get so drunk and go to a park. How old are you? 27. 27 is old, and you? 28, Your Honor. 28, you know, old enough not to be so stupid. You know, you can figure 17, 18 year olds are so stupid. At age 28, you should be doing something constructive. I assume you work? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a chef. And you? I'm a lumberman, Your Honor. Okay, so you're both gainfully employed, letting off a little steam. That's fine. But if there's a problem that develops because anybody is not operating on all cylinders because of alcohol, you have to take responsibility. What was the dental bill? My dental bill came out to $2,342. Can I see that, please, Kevin? I have this here. I'll give you both. Was... Any of this dental bill covered by insurance? On the dental, no. Okay. Anything else? My, uh, my wholeheartedly truth is I didn't ask him for a beer. I had no problems. I was avoiding him the whole night for the most part because from the past, Jacob has had a way worse drinking problem than I've ever like, gotten to. I went mm -hmm. out that night solely to have a couple drinks, hang out with friends. The night went longer than expected. Very nice. Nothing. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,171, which is half of your dental bill. You pay half. Don't get drunk. You're too old to get drunk. I don't believe that he maliciously threw this at you. I think that you asked for a beer, tossed it at you, and you missed. That was his stupidity oh. and yours. We're done here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this Thank court is adjourned. All I did was I, I underhand 
uh, lightly toss it over to him, and that's really what happened. I did nothing wrong to deserve to get a, a beer thrown in my face like a baseball. Unfortunately, he chipped his tooth, and so it was unfortunate. I said, hey, Jacob, look like you chipped my tooth. Like, look what you just did. No more drinking in the parks, guys. Not to do it again. I think this situation is the exact reason cities like Pasadena have rules about drinking alcohol in parks. Because like you always say, it's not an on-purpose, it's an accident. But a lot of times there are certain things that can increase the probability of an accident That's happening. True. And I think drinking at 2 a.m. in a park probably is one of those things. <laughs> that's true. So that that's a so many times rules and regulations don't seem to have any substance of reason behind it. But this certainly is an example of why. We Jeremy D. Torres is suing his former employer, Chad Young for unpaid wages and filing a false restraining order. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2140, DeTorres versus Young. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. DeTorres, according to your complaint, you did some work for the defendant as a plumber, didn't work out, and he terminated you, and he owes you some wages. Yes, ma'am. The defendant says that while your work in the beginning was okay, you were never an employee of his. You're an independent contractor. That's the way he sets it up, and he's going to explain that to me, that he paid you your wages even though the last job that you did cost him an awful lot to repair. He was not happy with the quality of work that you did, and his counterclaim is for vandalism, something that happened with his truck, work hours, loss due to your incompetence, that I'm not going to hear, sir. You know, you make a choice with an employee, and if it turns out to be something that is less than satisfactory, then you let them go. But the one who I assume suffered from what you call lack of quality work that he performed was the person that you were working for. Was that a private residence that he was doing work in? Yes. Yeah, a bunch okay. well, of that's, private residence. Yeah, that's the person who suffered. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we're going to make this as easy as possible. From what days to what days did you work? I worked for Chad from um, June 13th to August 3rd. And how much were you supposed to be paid? Uh, for those three days, $840. And that's for three days' work? Yes, ma'am. Did you say June 13th? Yes, ma'am. To August 3rd? Correct. Well, that's more than three days. No, no. His wage he owes me from August 1st to August 3rd is what he did not pay me for. Okay. And where did you work during those days? Uh, multiple residents. Okay. Do you have any sort of a call log from him? I do. It's right okay. here in my do short. Do you dispute that he worked from August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd? Yes. You dispute that there, he... There was one day he actually did one of my jobs for a couple hours that day. Doesn't matter. He has a log. Half a day for one day. Did you pay him for that half day? I did not because the job was done incorrectly multiple times. But he did that job. Okay. Now, do you have a log? Of uh, as in... It's some sort of a work log. You have a business. You have people who are general contractors. You get a call. You don't have a payroll because you pay these people independently. Do you pay them in cash or check? Both. Well, both. how did you pay all... him? Uh, sometimes it was through a cashier's check and sometimes it was cash. Okay, but never through a company check where you deducted Social Security. No, because I 1099 all my employees, so they're all self-employed. So they have to do all that on their own. I do understand. I mean, you're not the inventor of this whole system, yeah. sir, yeah. of paying in cash. Okay. Are you one of those independent contractors? Yes, ma'am. Stand up. How long have you been an independent contractor? Okay. I've been... Contracted with Chad since July 5th. Of what year? Uh, this year, 2022. Oh, so short term. Yes, ma'am. Does he pay you in check or cash? Uh, no, look at me. Check it first, and then uh, later on it became through Venmo, and then it was, it's gone back to check now. What kind of check? Uh, cashier's check. Just a straight cashier's check with nothing taken out? No, ma'am. No, I go, I go to my bank to get all that. What? Everything. I go to my bank to get the cashier's checks, and sometimes I demo him the payment, too, just to pay. I understand, but, sir, you're not the first person who I know who pays their people in cash yeah. and says that you're independent contractors. You're independent contractors. I don't want to know about it. What name do you use for the cashier's checks? My personal name. Is this the first time you've worked for him? Yes. Okay. Let me see what you have for August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Where did you work? Um, Come on. 
There were multiple residents. Well, you have to tell me so that he can answer. He says that you worked um, half a day that he didn't pay you for. Yes, ma'am. So let's say that's a full day. So that's two hundred dollars. Okay. See, he would email it on his work phone, and I'd follow the addresses there. I well, then you would, would have it on your my phone. My short notes Just on this. Just a second. Then you it, would have. Then you would have it on your phone. It was his company phone. He took it back when he came to my house unannounced and told me that I was fired. Redeemed his truck. I uh, got my tools out of his vehicle. Okay, just a sec. Do you have your phone? I do. Not the, not the. Per, I have my personal one that I. Talk. What about the phone that you took from him? No, that one's actually broke. So it's it's been with mm, him over okay. for the past week. Let me see the notes that you have that you took. Yes, ma'am. Fascinating. It's my shorthand, ma'am. How do I know what dates these are for? It was all on his phone. Ma'am. Well, that's not him to have to prove, sir. I wasn't able to prove anything when he took his phone back. I just had my, sh that's the notes when I was employed for him as I wrote down. It's not helpful to me. Yes, ma'am. So far, the only thing that he's acknowledged is that he owes you a day's wages. Yes, ma'am. Just $210. The other part of your complaint is a false restraining order against you. Yes, ma'am. Did you file a restraining order against him? Do you have a copy of what you wrote in your restraining order? I do. I'd like to see it. So what got me that restraining order is he called and made threats and made Was threats. this after you fired him? It was. Okay, so after you fired him, he called you? Made threats. Well, what did he say when he called you? Just basically talking about, I'm going to come to your house and everything. He wanted money? I guess, yeah. He said, you didn't pay me? Yeah. Okay. You say you got a text message and voicemail from Jeremy threatening to come to my place of residence. Yes. Can I hear it? Yeah. Do you want me to play it or do you want to look at it? I want to look at it. Okay. So, Mr. Torres, did you, after he fired you and took, came to your residence, took your house, did you call him threatening to come to his house? I did. There you did? One. With the police. It says it on these text messages, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to take his phone and those text messages. It's, there's more texts. That's just the one where he said he'd show me, send me my money. That's the voicemail, if you want me to play it for you. Sometimes the transcription doesn't work. Yeah. You want to play it? Just. Hi, bro. Uh, I definitely worked more than nine hours for the last week that I worked for you. Uh, I'll be contacting my wife. Play with me. I'll show up at your house. Yeah, that's a threat. With the police. That's, just, that's a threat. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I've had more. That's a threat. I had more incidents before that as well. May I say something, ma'am? He accused me of going into his gated community, slashing tires on his work vehicle. I stated that I was going to come to his house after, if you read my text, I said to him, hey, bro, I think I misunderstood your text message. Uh, if I did, my bad. If not, I'll show up at your house with the police. I never went to his house. I waited to see if he'd be the big man and just send me my money like he said he would. It, I listened to the message, sir. Yes, ma'am. The message sounded threatening. Did you read the rest of them? I don't care. That message sounded threatening. E.T. Torres claims his former employer, Chad Young, owes for unpaid wages and filing a false restraining order. Okay, that message alone, if he felt threatened because you were going to come to his house and you not only said you were going to come to his house, but you used an expletive before you and did that, did. which sounded which sounded threatening. This may be more benign, but that that phone message was sufficient for him to file for a protective order against you. Okay, why didn't he show up at the protective custody order? I don't answer your questions. No, you don't necessarily. Absolutely. Some people don't pursue it because once it's done, it's done. It wasn't done. And well, once it's this done, did you? This is the dismissal afterwards? right here. At, Dismissal for the No, I it didn't show up. I understand he didn't show up, sir. Yes, ma'am. But I'm saying to you, I listened to your text yes, message, and he had an absolute right to see. You see where he threatened me as well with all these back and forth texts and calling each other? Because it's in the text You're messages. suing him for money owed for wages and filing a false restraining order. Okay. You've proven that you worked an additional day for which he didn't pay you, which is $210. He has a counterclaim. Yeah. He says that you vandalized the tires on his car. The rest of it, I'm not dealing with, sir. You 
pick this employee. You don't then sue the employee if you don't like the job that they do. You fire him and you get somebody else to do the job. But you can't sue him because did, did the person who you did the job for sue you? No, because I've got a really good Be, reputation with because my that, Because you fixed it. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't done right. Yeah. Okay. Even up to that, like, that last day I said he worked for me, that job I had to go back to two weeks ago that they couldn't mm -hmm. close on the well, house. And next time you won't hire him. Yeah. Maybe other people won't either. But I want you to tell me about the tires. I want you to tell me what proof do you have that he had anything to do with your tires? When were the tires slashed, flattened? So the police report was uh, done Friday when he made the threats. Friday. What yep. on, date? Um, I got the date right here. I think it was. August 5th. Yeah, so August 5th is when he did it. Uh, August 5th is when? The police report was made for the threats. For the threat, for the voicemail. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so um, it was the end of the day, Friday, so courts closed for the weekend. August 5th. Yep. And then Monday... The 8th, I went outside to go to work. My tires were um, slashed in the end. At that point, I realized it was just over and done, and I need to go down and get a restraining order so he, people can't come onto my, you know, my property. Because area. you believed it was the plaintiff who yeah. was responsible. You believed you didn't have proof at the time. Yes. You didn't have proof. Again, I, and even in my injunction, I knew all I needed was this police report to get the injunction, so I just put in my police report. You're not talking about an flat. injunction. You're talking about a restraining order. Yeah, the restraining order. Yeah. Okay. So, it was I went the restraining... so in my restraining order, mm -hmm. I put just my tires were flat. I did not put my tires were slashed at any point because I just did because I knew the police report was enough to get the restraining order. Okay, you're trying to go into detail about my okay. tires. Okay, so in the police report, you have that your tires were flattened. No, that wasn't on the police report because that didn't happen yet. The tire incident did not happen. Okay. That happened Friday, Monday morning. I went um, out in my vehicle to go to work. That's when I found them flat and slashed. Did you file another police report? That's when I went and filed the restraining order that day. And okay, and in the application for restraining order, you said that my tires were flat and that was it. Yes, okay. I didn't, mean, I didn't mention that they were slashed. Correct. So I don't know how he would Got know it. my tires were slashed if I didn't mention it on my restraining order. I don't know. That's an interesting question. Mr. DeTorres, Mr. DeTorres, stop, yes, stop, stop your already. paper fluttering. Okay. What made you think that the defendant's tires were slashed rather than just the air let out of them? Because I read this police report and it has a mark right here saying, or the, the uh, file Show that he did. Show me. And make a right circle. Here, damaged property is what I read. He checked, he checked that I damaged his property because yeah. this is written against just, me. Just, just. Mr. Tatoris, do you understand my question, sir? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm nervous in the Just flight. a second. This no has sleep. nothing to do with nerves, You're Mr. Right. Tatoris. Well, I had no sleep last night. If that has nothing to do with sleep. As far as not being... Just a second. Yes, ma'am. What I'm asking you, Mr. Tatoris, is where does it say here that his tires were slashed? I, in my mind, somebody riding that against me, flattened tires, what else would it be? He lives in a gated community. Well, that could There's be a surveillance what could, showing me that I, the, my leg injury, the way I walk, is very distinctive. Okay? If he's got a proof that I slashed or flattened his tires, I said slashed. It's the same thing as flattened in my mind. That's the way I think. The way I read that, that's just how but it came out. But, of you my have to, but you have to understand that that's not what this says. Okay? It says that I damaged it, that his property. That damaged his property, and you said slashed tires. Okay? Yes, ma'am. How much were the tires? Four. Let me see the receipt. I do not have a receipt because I paid cash for my tires. Well, that's too bad. You better stop paying cash, sir. You can pay cash for tires. But when you buy tires with cash and you want to sue for them, you get a receipt from the people. And if you know you're coming to court, we're not talking about the things that happened two years ago. You are coming to court today. I went back to that tire shop and was like, we just, you know, we always do cash for all these vehicles. And well, what do we have cash for all your vehicles? That means you get a receipt. Right, your counterclaims dismissed because you have no proof of anything. On the complaint, sir, I'm awarding you $210, which is one day's pay. Thank you very much. This case is over. Court is adjourned. The work just wasn't up to the quality that he promised he was going to offer. It is what it is. That's just his nature. That's always been his nature. The judgment is what the judgment is. She felt like I was only awarded a day's pay, and that's what she gave. Keep doing what I do. That's all I can do every day.
Well, Sarah Rose, that is the perfect example of you're supposed to have proof when you come to court. Standard of proof exists for a reason. For, you know, I know that when I go someplace, and sometimes I pay cash. Mm -hmm. So we have to pay cash mm -hmm. for something. There's some or Venmo. Record, Venmo. You're supposed record. to get a receipt mm -hmm. in the event that you want to use whatever you bought and use that fact that you purchased something in the subsequent lawsuit. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as sending a gift. If you send somebody a gift, you keep the receipt yep. until you know that <laughs> they got the gift. Yeah. Then you take it and you throw it away. It's just it's a good thing. It's, it's good record keeping. And he's a business guy. Yeah. He's a business, he's a business guy. It didn't, didn't make sense to me. But clearly, thank you for somebody who has the Yeah.